I'm still laughing over electrocution window. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much, but <laughs> like, I and mean, that's what that's uh, what it looks like to me. I I just I I know it's not fast action, but I just <laughs> I can't remember it. Is it fast trick? Free triggered action is what I remember someone oh. correcting me to, and I'm like, I will never remember. I mean, that. yeah, it would Except help if it actually was did. called something that was easy to remember. Free triggered recall. ability? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I believe. I that's... just always call it a free trigger. <clears throat> yeah, free trigger. Zappy boy. Dangerous it's wiggle. Zappy dangerous boy. <laughs> wiggle. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, you've already given us one nickname. Let's let's stop flexing. It's fine. <laughs> I do like Zappy boy. Zappy boy. boy. <laughs> Zappy boy. Oh, zappy boy. <laughs> Danger, Danger Wiggle. Danger Wiggle is good. Yeah, <laughs> Ian, that's, that's a good one. I want to have some merch with the zappy boy who's just like clippy, but this is just like this character. Danger Here Wiggle the was the name boy. of my thrash twist band in high school. <laughs> thrash twist? The episode is... hasn't even started and we got the band name. <laughs> what, he what doesn't, it's not like he holds it for the recording. It Like, it's constant. That's that. That's that gold, though. That's what people tune in he, for. Well, you know how. Yeah. You know how, like, at it's any theme that restaurant. That tentacle time. <laughs> right, tentacle time. Mythos Busters, investigating the mystery monsters and madness of Arkham Horror, the card game. That that part that everyone holds out for. And the cold open. <laughs> right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 92 of Mythos Busters. This is Sean. Joining me tonight is a full and rowdy crew of investigators. We've got uh, Nick. Hey, Nick. Hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I, I good. Thank you. I'm mm-hmm. very excited. We, uh... We rarely record on Sunday evenings, mm-hmm. and normally I, I have a hard time with it because it's like, oh, God, we always go late, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, and, and starting the week out that way is rough, but oh, man, I couldn't be more excited to talk Iron Man. It's going to be awesome. And joining us as well is Ian. Hey, Ian. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm a bundle of feelings, and I feel like this Farkham Nights is sneaking up on me and gonna be launching a sneak attack soon because i can't believe how close it is now (laughs) yeah it's kind of insane despite the fact that we had every uh every control over when it actually is this year Mm -hmm. (laughs) it still managed to sneak up on us yeah much more warning than the average year yeah (laughs) but we didn't have to buy plane tickets two weeks before the event that's so also true hey scott how are you hi i'm i'm well how are you i i couldn't be better on a sunday evening Oh, you know, okay, so normally, you know, peeking behind the curtain here, Nick does the majority of the work on our show notes, and then the rest of us throw in when we have a particular session uh, section that we're all uh, throwing in on. Uh, I was so excited to actually dive into the show notes and, like, flesh this out and be like, yeah, what's Iron Man going to be like? This was the first moment where it really became real for me. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just couldn't be more excited. Joining us as well tonight... Uh, you didn't hear him on our Gen Con wrap-up podcast because we didn't have one, so y'all had to wait for for Iron Man. It is the one, the only, Casey, a.k.a. Mr. Trench. Hey, Casey. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It's that time of year again. <laughs> it sure is. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> what, Canadian Thanksgiving? Is it? What? It is. It, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. They, they are a month ahead of... Some, the yeah, real you, Thanksgiving. You guys Not do your anyone, Thanksgiving don't, late. No, 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 do you celebrate Thanksgiving? It's a terrible racist holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Every yes. year I manage to forget and learn anew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a fun episode for you guys tonight. We are going to run over... Uh, we've got some intro, but more or less, this is, this is the Iron Man episode. So we're going to talk details for virtual Iron Man this year. Uh, we're going to talk about our main topic which is, of course, our planning for our own team's run through Iron Man, our strategy, our decks, so on and so forth. And then, of course, we'll wrap it up with a little bit of tentacle time. 
Um, so, but first, before we dive into the news, I do want to check in with you guys. It is it is a little bit of custom. Uh, so, how has your Arkham been going of late, Ian? What you been playing? What have I been playing? Well, I've been playing this little expansion called the Innsmouth Conspiracy. Oh, that um, one. Yeah, that one. That old chestnut. Um, so I played... I haven't gotten a chance to really get to grips with it too much, but I did do one run-through with Solo Trish, which I'm not going to give any spoilers about Innsmouth, but was a complete shit show, I think is the technical <laughs> term. <laughs> it's probably the worst blind run I've ever had of any uh, expansion yes, the old ever. CSS. Yeah, she got wrecked with a capital R. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, let me try Solo Stella. Um, and I haven't gotten through the second Insmith scenario yet with her. But I did run Solo Stella through the first Insmith scenario, and it was like night and day. Like, she smashed that first <laughs> scenario. So I was like, okay, maybe there was just something terribly wrong with my Trish deck, or just bad luck or just the perils of a blind run or all of the above um so i'm still trying to uh, zero in on the exact difficulty of the scenarios but they're a lot of fun so far um and i'm looking forward to digging into them more but man this is yeah this is my first real go at solo stella i've mostly been playing her two-handed and and she is amazing solo yeah. like I don't think that was a fluke. Like she just smashed through that run because she had all the tools to do it. So her action efficiency, when you know how to play Survivor, is mm-hmm. it is top notch. She is very very mm-hmm. good. I I just love that moment when you fail and you just kind of laugh at the chaos <laughs> bag. Like okay, let me like trigger like five effects. Let me turn this card here and play this card here. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It, oh no! I <laughs> failed. <laughs> Trigger five. Abilities. I always think. I, I don't know if you guys ever saw the um, the shirt that Team Covenant had, where it's just a hand. Yes, I and love it. Says, it says, "I have an action." <laughs> and just like, <laughs> I feel like that's what Stella is when she fails a test. She's like, "Ah, I have reactions." <laughs> Counterplay. Hmm. Excellent. I I have not yet played Innsmouth. Am I the only mm. one there? To, to my disgrace, I own it, but I happen to be in the in the middle of another campaign, so I've yet to actually touch it. But I've heard, I've heard tell that it's uh, it's a mite tough. Mine is unfortunately still in shrink as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. But so, I have I have the next 19 days off of work. So <laughs> squeeze I, it in. I, hopefully, I can yeah just <laughs> find some time. Typical. I'll have played it six times by the next time we record. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nick, how about you? Well, my Innsmouth is still in the mail, um, so I I have... That's even farther from you than the shrink. It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope it's still in the shrink, too, but I, I can't confirm yet. Uh, <laughs> however, I did get all of the starter decks, finally, and I did get Barkham Horror, thanks to Justin and his assistance with that. So I have all those sleeved, and then, <laughs> so I have Barkham, and I was yeah, like, yeah. I want to play some more Arkham. And I look at Barkham, and then I decide to do Return to Carcosa. <laughs> so. <laughs> God damn it, Nick. <laughs> Ouch. So, you had one job. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm i running, it's hard, Return to Carcosa with uh, Joe Diamond and Stella. Um, what, well, Ooh. first what I did was I made like seven investigator decks just to have them. Um, and then I decided, all right, I want to do Return to Carcosa, and I looked at the seven decks I built, and I picked those two out. Um, and Joe is doing okay. I think some of the inside events that came with Harvey work really well in his hunch deck, specifically, uh, what is it called, Burning the Midnight Oil, the one Investigate, Gain Two Resources, like... That Ooh, one yeah, in the hunch nice. deck is perfect because it's like, oh, yes, I was going to do that anyway, and now I get resources for it. Um, Isn't that card free? But Solid. Uh, What's that? Yeah, no. Um, but Stella, holy crap! Um, to to piggyback on Ian's bit, she is super good. Um, and I actually, she caused me to do a true survivor build because um, I'm running eight innate skills, including 
her three signatures, which are all innate. So True Survivor is doing work in my Stella deck. Pulling back uh, her Sigs, pulling back Upgraded Unexpected Courage, pulling back Resourceful. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. Um, I am in... I did the first three Carcosa games, and then I and then I jumped to um, the Constellation, and then I jumped to uh, Excelsior, because uh, those are my two insert into any campaign scenarios. Um, and yeah, they've been rocking it, so super fun. And that w- that was not for your achievement hunters, though, right? That is oh no, for funsies. That was for funsies. I did also do uh, some new achievement hunters, which that that episode went up last week, uh, as of when we're recording this. Uh, continuing to just face plant in expert <laughs> gathering with Preston over and over and over. Um, I've I've yet to hear. I've yet to have a chance to listen. But I've actually heard a couple people be like, you know what, Nick? We know that you're losing, but we appreciate that you continue <laughs> to post it because it's a real experience to just bash your head up against it's, scenarios sometimes like that. I think I talked about it last time I was on. Maybe not because I, I missed last episode, but I sat down with the intent to record multiple episodes at once and get them edited and scheduled for post. And instead <laughs> I recorded six games and made two episodes out of it. Like, oh my God, I'm that, that scenario. I'm never going to want to touch gathering again after, by the time I get out of this, <laughs> I can guarantee it. So, yeah. Um, and then also, uh, uh, Sean, you and I and Justin sat down and played uh, TCU. We played the Witching mm-hmm. Hour, um, and I did my Carolyn build, which was super fun. Um, yeah, no, that was a fun. Yeah, that game went super well. It did. I, it was really fun. And not only that, but like I had this moment that I don't get too often, where I looked at the board and I saw Carolyn and Patrice and Agnes all on table, and I saw them going after witches, and I was like, I would totally read this book. Like, right? I would be all I would be 100% down for a mini series about the psychiatrist, the the waitress and the artist, um the musician Violinist. who are yeah, who are all going eh, it's a form of art, who are all going after this <laughs> coven of witches. Like I would that was I was like I don't get that moment too often with this game despite how narrative focused Arkham is, but I just had that moment where I was like this is really this is a really cool setup. So I would read that book. I would read all the fan fictions. Mm-hmm. I would I would watch all of like the music compilations on YouTube. Just, <laughs> just rife and and lousy with caster chicks. That's just super up my alley. <laughs> but yeah, that was fun, and we'll we'll kind of get to what yeah what that was about later on for sure. Um, where are we? We're at uh, Casey. How about you? Uh, well, it's good that you saved me for last because I have <laughs> no new uh, LCG news to report. I can say that uh, Under Dark Waves has at least two good scenarios for the uh, third edition of the board game. <laughs> okay. And then uh, lots of theory crafting with Scott for our Iron Man decks. Uh, I did the Pale Lantern and Tyrants of Ruin uh, and prioritized playing the new characters to answer your question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ellie would. Um, yeah, uh, it's more Arkham Third, which is good. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, oh, planning uh, uh, Dream Eaters. I think was what we said we were gonna do, right, Scott? The uh, the Calvin and someone run. Oh yeah, who was it? I don't know. Was it Calvin and Preston. Oh boy, no. that that would be minimum fun. stats, maximum Did- effort. Yeah, there was there was, was some, was some joke it, that there, we... yeah it was definitely Calvin because he got a lot of new toys mm. with uh, the starter decks. Yeah, he did. Holy cow! Yeah, <laughs> so I yeah, think between, it was gonna be between like... Nacho and Stella, he he's just mm-hmm. he's got lots of things. <laughs> yeah, the the hurt me more. I guess that's his <laughs> shtick. But... Yeah, I remember there was a meme that someone made, and it's like uh, thing like a bunch of like the the, the there's a comic and then. So the guy's like, uh, 101 lies you can tell yourself. And inside the book, it says, like, the card pool looks really good for Calvin right now. <laughs> and I just, every time we get more yeah. cards, it's like, oh, no, now, now the card now pool it, really Now good. Calvin's oh, no, playable. Now it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Uh, so then for my part, obviously, the aforementioned game that Nick played uh, was a big one. I also have been pounding through Return to Forgotten Age. As a means to test my TCU Patrice deck, um, 
I don't think it was a good testing ground, particularly for what this deck is trying to do, but it <laughs> still has performed really well. And then across from her, I'm running uh, my first constructed Winnie deck. And oh my god, she is winning her <laughs> way into my heart. She is so bloody fun, and I think I completely feel validated and stand by my statement that Winnie has the largest gap between her constructed starter deck, or sorry, her, her starter deck and a, an actual constructed deck. Hmm. It's so good. It's so good. But the thing I have to say is that Return to Forgotten Age is great. Um, it makes Forgotten mm-hmm. Age everything I wanted it to be. As we've said multiple times on the podcast, I think that we all kind of started a little bit confused and sour on Forgotten Age because it hits you so hard when you don't know what you're doing. And then with (laughs) repeated plays have warmed to it to the point where it is just a great campaign once you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I think this with the changes they made specifically to the explore mechanic Mm -hmm. make that make that sing and it, it scales so much better down from high count multiplayer because it feels like the explore mechanic from before was really geared toward high count multiplayer and then solo players just had to bite the bullet to get through it yep um and in the modifications they made uh completely fixed that and the player cards in it are fun and i feel like this is probably possibly my favorite return box maybe over even above dunwich but i just you know it's tough to compare dunwich was very good I'm just going to throw it out there that I still think Original Explorer is just fine, including Solo. Hmm. Just I throw mean, it out there. Everybody's wrong about something, if you pl- so... <laughs> you, if you plan around it and plan for it and just realize that, you know what, there's four or five treacheries I'm just going to have to deal with. Yeah, yep. I don't know. So, Sean, yeah, I... how, how do you feel about Return to City of Archives, though? Um, that, I mean... I feel like that was one of the ones where it was like, okay, the original kind of did what we wanted it to do, right. so we're not really going to change much about it. We're just going to expand it. <laughs> and that's what that scenario needs. And Yeah, and that's <laughs> yeah. <what it> <laughs> more locations. <laughs> right, right. But the nice thing is, like, the clue requirement stays the same, so you just have other options to go to. It's not like it requires you to cover more space. So right. I, I was fine with it. I feel like I would enjoy it more, in this case, in high count multiplayer, because playing it two-handed... I don't even think I got down to the new area just because <laughs> I was so comfortable with the shit I already knew, yeah. which was yeah, maybe my own mistake. Well, and knowing what the downside is for that scenario, it makes you kind of scared to deviate from the tried and true plan. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. big time. <laughs> for, for real. Like, since that is such a failure point in that that campaign it really makes me hedge toward being very conservative which yeah. i fed into on my first playthrough next time i go through return to forgotten age i will definitely check out the new area seemed fun but yeah anyway really liking that campaign uh my my patrice deck is working like i want it to winnie is fantastic i think she has maybe slid sideways into being my favorite rogue even displacing safina which is saying something hmm. What about skids? What about skids? Yeah. I'm sorry, who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, him? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so, guys, let's get into the meat of the show. First thing we want to announce is... Wait, did I skip anyone? I didn't skip anyone, did I? Uh, uh, you skipped me, but I, skipped I was just going to talk about... <laughs> yeah. I, see, I, uh, I had I had a jinkies moment there. To, uh, to go. Sorry. I haven't actually like played Arkham. I've just done so much Arkham adjacent things in the last two weeks. Like I, I redid my card organization of Arkham. Oh, that's that's which a, is <laughs> that's an afternoon. Yeah, that it's, is an endeavor at this point. The, that is like the equivalent of playing a campaign. Like it, there's a lot. And then of course with Casey, they were just making decks and theory crafting mm. and all that. So. Yeah. Yep. Not very exciting. Between the influx of the starter decks and then. Uh, Return to and Dunwich or, or sorry Innsmouth all coming out like I've had to redo my player card organization and I don't think it has settled into its final form yet which right. makes me nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I mean it's a good problem to have but it is still a problem. One thing that made me a little bit sad though is so I have this one like one of those big white boxes like the single row mm-hmm. log boxes mm-hmm. that I have Iron Man written <laughs> on it right and that's the one <laughs> I bring to Iron Man that has everything pre-built oh. and we're we're good to go oh. right 
And usually what happens is sometime around September, early October is when I pre-build all the scenarios and proxy everything. And then I take that scenario or that campaign out and I put it into its return box because uh-huh. that return Which box is, is usually out now. Place. Right. Like, and now I can take it out and I can like undo proxies and stuff like that. And I was doing that and I'm like, oh, I don't have to put anything back in the <laughs> box. And then I just felt like this... My heart was empty like the box. (laughs) (laughs) So. Can hardly blame you. I. Yeah. Yeah, we were chatting earlier, and I think my brain has only just recently started to accept that we won't be sitting at an IRL table with each other for Iron Mm -hmm. Man this year. Sucks. And it's it's unfortunate. But hey, 2020 can take more from you than that, I suppose. It's true. (laughs) Of all. (laughs) What a privileged position I have to complain about exactly. (laughs) Right. Yeah, that wasn't my point, but you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Iron Man this year. Let's talk about it. Um, so Iron Man obviously is coming. It is going to be October 24th, all day Saturday. Start when you want. We're going to be starting at our own time. Um, so the first thing I want to point out is if you haven't checked it out already, if you want more info and you want the link to sign up for Iron Man, it's not too late. Even if you're very close to the day, we checked with Josh, who is uh, doing great work organizing this for us, and he said he doesn't have a strict cutoff date. He will make it work with anyone who wants to play. So check out the Iron Man section on our website, mythosbusters.com. That'll give you the link to sign up. If you have any further info or need any further info, it'll be there. And if you have any questions, feel free to always email or, or ping us in Discord. We're happy to uh, to answer any of those. So starting off, the event is going to be uh, Friday night, October 23rd. We're going to play the, the prologue and give everyone who cares to accept our canon uh, narrative their starting point. Obviously, if you want to play the prologue on your own, or I, f- I think I've seen a couple of like prologue simulators thrown out in Discord mm-hmm. at this point, right? Yeah, um, Mortendahl actually made one, like, two days ago. In Like, he's learning how to code Python. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I made, like, a, I don't know what you call it, a program app? A, a Python? In a Python snake? that, yeah, he made a snake that uh, spits out <laughs> uh, results for you. So. What a helpful snake. <laughs> Good little danger noodle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty great. So however you decide to start the campaign, whether you take our results, which <laughs> are probably going to be pretty awful, I'm really nervous about the prologue, um, or, or work with your own, uh, we're going to be playing that Friday night. We're going to start it at 7 p.m. Central Time on our Twitch channel. So that is twitch.tv slash mythosbusters. If you haven't followed us already, please go out and do that. And after we wrap the prologue, we are going to be doing our now annual ceremony of the drawing of the weaknesses. Sadly, we're not IRL this year, so we're going to do it in a, a different fashion than we did last year. Scott, you were kind of the mastermind between uh, for, for how we're actually going to do it this year, so do you want to outline that? Yeah, so it's going to be right after we finish the playing the prologue. Uh, I'll have to, uh, we'll have to stop the stream and have to reset some things up so i can aim my camera at a table and all this stuff um but if you want your weakness drawn live uh we have a form you can just pop your team name in and this is the reason i'm doing this is so uh if you show up at the at the stream and you're there uh one thing we did last year is you could choose to uh declare to everyone i am a coward and i reject my fate and then you could redraw your weakness but then you have to keep the second one, um, and so if you're in if you're in chat, uh, you can. When I'm drawing your weaknesses, if you want to back out of one of them, you can in all caps must be in all caps. I am a coward and I reject my fate, and I'll redraw a weakness for you. It's um, it's 2020. Is there a showing your belly emote? Because <laughs> I, uh, I feel like that should be part of it too. Uh, sure. <laughs> Um, I'm going to add a little pizzazz to it, too. I have something planned. I, I want to keep that a little... It'll be a nice little surprise. But anyways, um, I put the, the the link in chat. It'll be on the show the show notes. Uh, and basically it's just saying, like, hey, do you want me to draw the random weakness for you? And are you going to be live? If you are if you do want us to draw them for you and you're not going to be there, um, we're, I'm just going to post the video up 
uh, right afterwards, and I'll try and timestamp the different team names in the YouTube comments, so you can just find your team name, click on it, and it'll go to your drawing of the weaknesses. Uh, and in that case, if you're not live, I will give like a little five second warning, like, okay, if any of you want to reject your fate, pause it, think about it, whatever, and then I will draw four more weaknesses for whoever is a coward yeah. and rejects their fate. And so. in case anyone was wondering, we will be sending the weakness police around the world to make sure that uh, everyone uses the weaknesses they are dealt. It's true. So. Um, Big Kahuna asks, when you redraw, uh, do you shuffle the weakness back in? No, uh, we didn't. Last year, we didn't. No. So, like, basically everyone drew a card, and then it's like, no, I reject my fate. You just pull another one out of the same... Thing. Boy, yeah, that'd be so, a high-level dick move to be like, "All right, reject your fate, announce it publicly, now draw it again." <laughs> yeah. Big <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> says, "Good, fuck doomed." <laughs> well, you know, now there's uh, there's more than one of those type of uh, weaknesses, so there you, sure are. You're not guaranteed. You're not guaranteed to get out of it. So, um, but yeah. So, dude, I, anyways, I drew that for our testing campaign, and I'm Patrice, <laughs> so I fucking hate it it's terrible it's so bad and on patrice yes oh yeah he got the right the just... signed in blood or whatever it is yeah <laughs> yeah just quit. no no resources yeah, i'm not... never gonna have resources i guess i think is what he said luckily given the complexity of schedules and the amount of time between now and iron man there's no way we're gonna finish the campaign so i will right. probably just you know <laughs> ignore it hey pro tip patrice wasn't gonna finish it anyways <laughs> oh yeah that's that's entirely true. Entirely true. So, yeah, I have... This is the first time going into to this where I have, like, some very, very specific feelings about uh, about weaknesses since I'm playing Patrice. There are some that are just unacceptable. So I put it at, like, a 40% chance that I'm going to have to yell that I'm a coward on live stream, so I'm looking forward <laughs> yeah. to that. I yelled it last year. Mm -hmm. I know. What did you get? What yeah. caused you to reject it last year? And you know what? I, I what, what, after I rejected. it... Yeah, it was the um, it was one of the hidden ones where it's I had to defeat an enemy with more damage. Oh, yeah. like I had to overkill and an enemy, mm -hmm. and I was Ursula <laughs> with no combat at all. <laughs> and but I realized then, like like twenty minutes after, I'm like, oh shit, I could have drawn Doomed. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, actually that one is okay. And I end up getting the I have to evade yep. someone like over ev like evade an evaded enemy or something. And I was like, okay, whatever, fine. Like, just, I'm losing two experience. That's what's happening. Hmm. Um, yeah. End up taking, like, eight experience away from me that campaign. <laughs> Yikers. Still, still beat it. Yep. Yikers. It's pretty great. Um, yeah, where were we? So, so check out the, the Drawing of the Weaknesses. Check out Scott's form if you want to sign up for it. We're looking forward to you there. And also, just kind of want to point out, like, we're going to... Obviously, that's the main impetus for for our stream after the the prologue but we're also going to have drinks and just kind of have fun with it so if you want to just come hang out with us and do archimy things feel free maybe jackbox possibly things. yeah you know i'm, I'm amenable that was really to fun it. last time so yeah yeah all right we'll, fi we'll figure it fit it in at some point i'm sure um yeah. so of course that leads us on to saturday october 24th where we will be playing the fourth annual tcu iron man Iron Man 4, Full Circle, the Undone Fun Run. Recircling. <laughs> which we'll get to in just a minute. But, uh, so you go ahead, you guys go ahead and start whenever your group wants to start for Iron Man. We are going to be starting at 10 a.m. Central Time. And that is just purely in tradition with the, the opening time of the FFG Event Center, which is, which is when this all kicks off normally. We're going to stream our scenarios. And then as well, we're going to update uh, with the other teams uh, who, are, who are playing and updating us in between. So, as we're about to talk about, make sure you get out to the Farcom, or the formerly FarcomCon Discord. We'll put a, a, a link up here in the show notes. Get out to that Discord because we're going to have a dedicated Iron Man channel uh, to talk mm -hmm. about. And we're gonna channels. Also, yes, channels. We're going to have one for just general chatting. And then we're going to have one specifically for team reports. Um, and then, depending on how we're doing by the end of our Iron Man campaign, expect a wrap-up stream from us. It might just be loopily 
playing Jackbox games, it might be an actual recording where we talk about the campaign and how it went. I don't know. I have no idea. Like, none of us have any idea whether sitting and streaming at our computers is going to be more or less draining than sitting and playing IRL. <laughs> no idea. So we'll just we're gonna make yeah. that call on the night. <laughs> Uh, though, so as I alluded to earlier, we've got some exclusive event merch that we're I, like. I'm super excited for this. I'm very, very excited to get this. We have uh, an amazing cheesy logo that uh, I worked with uh, community member Pat, who is who is a great graphic designer, to to come up with. Um, it is it is based on your classic fun run silhouette type logo. And it is a bunch of cultists and witches getting chased by the uh, by the Watcher, and that's why they're running. So we've got this logo out there. Uh, we've got merch on our merch store. You've got T-shirts. You've got coffee cups. You've got stickers. Anything that you would care to grab to commemorate this event, we've got it for you. So go check it out at mythosmerch.com. Um, and the one thing I'm going to say is do it sooner rather than later. This is my fault. You all can hate me if this doesn't show up on time, and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. But the, the shipping window for our merch store is kind of edging up on the very beginning of Iron Man at this point. So if you order now, you might get it by Iron Man. If not, you will probably have a, a nice little piece of memorabilia to wear after the fact. Um, God, where else? What else? We already talked about the Farcom Con server. Go check it out. We'll put that, in, we'll put that link in the show notes. Uh, like I said, it's also very imperative if you're going to join that server that any someone from your team be delegated to update us in the update channel. Because b- between our scenarios, we're going to run back to that update channel and be like, all right, team d- mythos m- d- people are are here and they've got, our, I don't know, <laughs> I, I tried to come up with one on the fly and it just completely failed on me. No, yeah, mythos people. I like it. Yeah, the mythos people. Okay. Be- because you're mentioning team names, yes. can I read all... I'm going to read please. a few off, because Josh please. Josh provided us with the list of um, a lot of the team names that are coming out of this. Mm-hmm. So there's the Methos Brothers. I thought that... Busters. I thought sorry. That was, the Methos Busters. I thought that was our that's team. Us. <laughs> was that not uh, us? There's, no, that's me. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. okay. Wait, <laughs> I, I put that in. Because I think Josh had uh, put up the, the spreadsheet. It was right shortly after Farcom Con, and I still had the mess with the mythos busters there we go i did it right the first time um or i kept on saying meth with the mythos buster but anyways uh there's wap wap which you all know stands for wireless access port yes but um (laughs) it's a witch arresting posse all right uh the okay young sheldon gang the lodge dodgers that's funny jenny and the bets yes (laughs) Uh, grilled salmon servants of Melek Taus, uh, totally not the, in the lodge. The cowards, <laughs> yes. bent halos, group two. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> yes. Bumble buddies, team winging it. Uh, we have a sixth sense. Stewards of the ashen shield. I don't even know what that means. Um, Duke's beautiful bean footage. <laughs> the artist formerly known as roommates uh in for a penny in for a pound make a wish strikes and gutters witches get stitches <laughs> witches get stitches that one's on there twice isn't it uh yeah uh the viral lodge a team of two team get rid of uh q team team joey d pixels of gloom and less than optimal plays. <laughs> I like that you said you're going to read a few of them, and I think you just went the whole list. <laughs> I did because I just wanted to give a shout out to everyone sure. who's already that's signed fair. up and say thank that's you for enough. signing up. That's, so, that's but a... there's some there's some gooders in there. <laughs> yes, and hopefully we'll be getting updates from all of them and anyone else who joins because I want to see how everyone's doing in between our scenarios. So, um, between our scenarios, we're going to check in with everyone, and then at the end. Of course, we'll check in as the the end campaign results roll in because anyone who's playing two players is going to finish before us. So we'll have some stuff to report on. So again, check out our Farcom Con server if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just going to be a good time. It's going to be a real good time. 
Uh, and of course, if you have any, I guess if you have any questions in general about Iron Man, feel free to shoot us an email. That's mythosbusterspod at gmail.com or ping any of us in the Discord server and we'd be happy to answer those for you. Mm-hmm. Ian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do we have any patron business for this episode? <laughs> <laughs> we do, in fact, have some patron business. Um, all right. So, as always, want to give a shout out to our board members: Chris B, Chris H, Chris M, Martin, Jared, Ian, Kyle, Philip, Dave, Abilio, Nathan, Chad, and Robert. Thanks so much for your support of the podcast. And special shout out to a random patron this time around is to Eb Crampley. Thank you, Eb. And at MythosMerch.com. Um, so, obviously, we have the uh, the Iron Man uh, merch up that we just mentioned. But in addition to that, we have our usual um, kind of standard Mythos uh, merch that's up there as well. So, we'll make sure you check that out. Um, wanted to give a reminder for uh, the special Arbitz tokens. Um, so... As part of our swag for um, FarcomCon, we had special Doom and Clue tokens made in uh, partnership with Arbitz that have our logo on the front and back. One uh, kind of regular logo side for the Clues and a very, very angry red um, <laughs> <laughs> logo for the Doom side. They are amazing. They look even better in person. Mm-hmm. Um, but those are available for anyone to buy on the Arbitz site. So even if you didn't happen to win uh, any of copies of those tokens as swag or didn't get a chance um, to get those sent to you as one of our, you know, board members or $15 level. You can go to the Arbitz site and buy some. And we also, uh, Arbitz was kind enough to provide a special discount code for any of our listeners. So anyone who listens to the podcast, uh, make sure you have a notepad ready because I'm going to give you a very special code right now that you can use. I believe it's a 10% discount. Is that correct, John? That's correct. Yep. Okay. So the code you want to use is Mythos Busters Direct. So not Mythos Busters, <laughs> Mythos Busters. <laughs> that'll Direct. get you a different discount. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. That'll that'll access the hidden portal <laughs> inside. There's yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Mythos Busters Direct. If you're a listener, go ahead and enter in that code, and that'll get you um, a discount on those sweet sweet tokens. Um, let's see, uh, any update? I don't think there's any update on the tattoo stuff, right, Sean? Only that my, my second appointment to, to actually finish the thing, ideally, mm. is coming up next Friday. Um, mm. so I'll Ooh. have it finished for, for Iron Man, which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, and then that has also prompted me to hold off on any, any video editing because i'm just gonna edit the whole thing together session one and session two for one mega tattoo video so pay attention for that it's gonna be out sometime after iron man awesome um everything else is pretty much the same as it has been um we're continuing to chug our way closer to our next patron goal which will be creating another custom scenario made by the mythos busters and uh, we're continuing to work on dissonant voices, um, and we have a couple cycles complete, but we're working on completing the remainder soon. I'll tell you what, guys. The TCU box will be up by the middle of next week, possibly by the time this episode releases, depending on how quick we are at it. It's going to be out there. Um, so, yeah, pay attention. Now that I don't have to do the tattoo video, it's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> Can I just say that I just realized what role that beautiful bean footage was? No. What is that from? <laughs> it's from the, the Bush's Baked Beans commercials. Is that what that's from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. I had to stare at garage. it for like minutes. <laughs> Roll before that it. beautiful bean footage. <laughs> And the dog's wow. name was Duke, as Network oh, is pointing out. Oh, all right. Chat. Wow. Wow, oh, this okay. is accessing a part of my brain that hasn't been accessed since, <laughs> right? like, 1997. I know, since I had network <laughs> or cable TV. Wow. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> what else, Ian? Is That's that all we got. That's yep. it. <laughs> Nick, 
Hey. We have an exciting news article we laid on us. We do. So War of the Outer Gods uh, came out, and it was almost it was like right after the last episode was recorded, so it's probably a little old at this point, but it has some really exciting stuff in it. Um, obviously, there's... Uh, were there any player cards in this one? There weren't. Were there? There no. weren't. Okay. I don't well, think they said it, but I have a feeling that this was the intended Gen Con scenario, yes? I think that's what a lot of people... Oh, are yeah, for some reason I was thinking, thinking it was part yeah. of, of Innsmouth. Yep. Okay. Um, no, yeah, okay, so the intended... Yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, this looks really cool. It's like uh, the Fate of Threads, because it's reverse Threads of Fate. You got three agendas <laughs> and three warring <laughs> cults, and I love the fact that you can just let the enemies go and, like, deal with each other, and you kind of have to figure <laughs> out, like, which one is, you know, like, you, you, gotta, you gotta manage the different enemy factions. I think that's so cool. Um, and the templating on these enemies looks so yes. awesome. Yes. So that was awesome. that was my biggest takeaway from this article, was just like, oh, I love the new enemy templating. I kind of wish they would do that every time a new cycle came out. Yeah! That's just gorgeous. Yeah, it looks Blue, great. Blue, green, red. Anyway, yeah, there's not much to... I guess I mean I don't. There's not really much else to say other than that. Um, yeah, it's like it's. I know some people don't like spoilers, so yeah, I'm, we're not going to get but into. You it can too. go read. Yeah, um, it does have epic multiplayer rules, so I assume right. that this was the Gen Con one because that makes sense. But mm-hmm. if that's the case, um, chances are at some point after it releases, we'll throw some kind of event for it. So pay attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we can't do it in person right now, so, you know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those guys who did the online blob get cracking at the outer world. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. We, we didn't have any news beyond that, right, Nick? Nope. Uh, just the What's Available Now article, which everybody knows that, so. Perfect. All right, guys, so let's get into the meat of tonight's episode. We're going to talk about The Circle Undone as a campaign. Um, spoiler alert, nothing sacred at this point, uh, as, as you may have gleaned. I don't know whether I'm turning it over to Ian or Scott, but I'm going to guess Ian. Where are we going Ian with this is, bad boy? Ian is the mastermind in this. I. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the campaign or the decks we are bringing first, or, and or both? Um, I kind of think we can talk a little bit about just the campaign in general and then go over our decks and then, and then we can kind of delve into the very, very nitty gritty of, uh, of the plan. Take (laughs) us through it, Yoda. (laughs) Teach us. All right. So first off, I guess, is thinking about just general thoughts about, because, one of the reasons I want to talk about the campaign in general is because I think we took some general considerations into mind when we picked what investigators we wanted to play in our group composition. Um, so when we're thinking about like Circle and Done, like what were the biggest um, concerns or things we were trying to keep in mind for for Circle and Done? Uh, oh, and one last thing I'll say is, even though this is very Iron Man focused, I think even listeners who aren't going to play Iron Man, this could be useful because even if you're not playing the entire Circle Undone in one sitting, <laughs> even if you're just starting a new Circle Undone campaign at any point, I think this is like the place where it's probably as in depth as we'll ever get on this particular campaign. Seems about right. Yeah, based so, on history. What? So Circle Undone. What are the big things about circle and done that stick out to you in your memory bogging treacheries names, okay name, well yeah. the part and parcel <laughs> scott part and parcel <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i just feel like uh, those treacheries the the witch's treacheries like bedeviled mm-hmm. and racked and and the ones that just camp in your threat area until you can hit a willpower test i feel like they've never been more prominent than they are in this campaign mm-hmm yeah, and I think with our our layout of investigators, we're well suited to deal with them. Like I think there was big consideration put towards that as a big issue that you're going to have to deal with. 
Yeah, yep. those are those th- that kind of threat area overload is like one of the signature things of TCU, and I always have the memory in my m- mind of uh, when I was running Preston through with I think it was Preston and Diana, but so many games would end with him having like five or six treacheries <laughs> just sitting in yes. a, just chilling in his threat area for most of the game, just obscene amounts of treacheries. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think another uh, kind of key part of TCU that we talked about a lot is the fact that you get split up um, mm. at least twice, right? Like, the, I think there's two big moments where you get split up. Um, mm hmm. And then also, just in general, it seems to be, like, even if you don't, the, the campaign doesn't force you to get split up, there are certain scenarios that really reward being able to kind of divide up the map. I think more than any other campaign, this one tries to push you into flexing a little bit for, for higher account multiplayer because of that split up. And because even beyond forcibly splitting you up, there are a lot of times in this campaign before the Black Throne, most prominent, uh, where you kind of have to split up to get everything done as quickly as you need it. So the ability to just kind of be able to do a little bit of everything, even if you lean one way or the other, is super valuable. Yeah, I think another one, Beyond the Black Throne is definitely one, and then also Wages, wages of Sin, I think of, where like, mm-hmm. kind of splitting up to, to do the ghost busting <laughs> so and get to the right <laughs> place. Oh, yeah. Useful. For the greater good, has a big branching map. Like, there's a lot of places in this campaign where if you can hold your own, splitting up, it's going to benefit you. Right. What about particular scenarios? Because I know when we played um, TFA last year, we immediately identified, like, okay, City of Archives is going to be probably the most crucial turning <laughs> point of the whole campaign. <laughs> Turns um, out it was. <laughs> and, of course, Boundary Beyond, just because of the difficulty, we're like, okay, keep our eye. And then always the closing scenario. But it feels like there's usually maybe, like, two or three scenarios that are kind of the pivot points of a campaign. So... For TCU, what do we think are the biggest concerns? Secret name is just a bastard of a scenario. Yeah, like <sighs> yeah. that might be the consensus. Does sometimes. it? It doesn't have a lot that like affects later in the campaign, does it? It's just super hard. Only uh, your resolution. Uh, All right. Yeah. The, yeah, the stuff you recover for the uh, the checklist of mementos, mm-hmm. but. Mm-hmm. In terms yeah. of ways for like a scenario to just like, mob you and never <laughs> yeah. really give you a chance to play the game, <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's pretty bad. Definitely one of the instances this cycle that uh that does it. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it, it's not it's not so much even like yeah, it's not it's a concern not so much for being a failure point of the campaign because it's not, mm-hmm. but for being like a table flipping moment. <laughs> <in the laughs> campaign. And also just potentially dragging it out, which was something we talked about with um, Heart of the Elders last year. Mm. Like, it's not going to be a hard scenario. Well, Secret Name is a hard scenario, but Mm -hmm. we were more concerned that it's just going to drag the time. And in this case, since it's virtual, we don't have to worry about, like, the (laughs) event center closing. But we still Mm -hmm. don't want to be playing until, like, 3 a.m. So Speak for yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I uh, I put a meme in the chat because it just made me howl with laughter the first time I saw it. But it's mm-hmm. basically like when you've been playing the secret name for three hours. <laughs> that's Bon Jovi. Whoa, we're halfway there. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, um, I think Wages of Sin is something mm-hmm. that, uh, like, I think we basically all four of us, because that that's a scenario you can. It's one of those push your luck, right? Like, see how many yeah. heretics you can get and whatnot. Um, but I think it's similar to our Boundary Beyond strategy, which was get three locations, that's all you need, the bare minimum, to get the outcome we want, right? And we'd, we pushed a little harder because we could, but that was our plan mm-hmm. going into it, right? And to me, Wages of Sin is pick a heretic, get one of them, get out. And quite honestly, like, for time-wise, because the secret name is very long and Wages of Sin can take a while... Like, I say we get one heretic and just GTFO. Mm. Mm-hmm. But. Wages of Sin does have, like, actual campaign fallout, though. At least. That's true. With regard to, like, the, the difficulty for later scenarios. And Secret Name is 
most of the the problems are contained to actually playing through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Am I remembering correctly that uh, Wages of Sin, like, if you actually run out the agendas on that one, the penalty isn't actually much? Uh, I don't think. Only if there bad. were a way to look. Yeah. <laughs> if only. I thought you just got watched like you, the Watcher's Gaze or something like that. You eluded the watcher's gaze. There, yeah, there's like there's there's story implications to it more than um, mechanical. mechanical implications. Sure. And we know which ones we care about in Iron Man, right, boys? <laughs> <laughs> Scenario eight R one. That's what I care about. I I personally I feel like more than any other campaign. This is one where I've kind of designed and did all my thinking from the last scenario backwards. Like, Beyond the Black Throne is, I feel like, the scenario to worry about mm. in this campaign. Mm -hmm. that, because out of all the ones we've played so far, I feel like this is definitely the toughest because of how swingy it is, how random it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so... I, I've said this in our Discord and uh, places, but I would not be surprised if this is the Iron Man that has the highest loss rate so far, and it's going to be because of Black Throne, basically. Remind me, does yeah. Black Throne, that only pulls from the lead investigator's deck, it doesn't pull from everybody's equally, does it? That's lead oh scenario. my god, what a big middle yeah. finger! <laughs> like, Just pick the can, shittiest deck. Yeah. Can, can we have a moment? We recognize yeah. that uh, empty space and and swarmed, for that matter, are just weird mechanics that don't actually play with themselves. And the fact that they pull from player decks is just kind of a weird thing. So we're gonna play it that way for Iron Man because that's the rules as written. But like I I have gotten to like house ruling just using spare and counter sets because mm -hmm. it's, it's not like there's any reason. For it to be a player card, it's not like you ever discard a swarm card, and if you have that card in play, do something cool. It's not; it never right. plays with that mm -hmm. mechanic. It's yeah. just literally a placeholder. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I think there's narrative ties to to taking, you know, if the lead investigator's life force, if you will, to make up the uh, the, the playing area. But, hmm. you know, but everyone that, else that's is not really just completely about. okay. <laughs> that's the thing, yeah. right? It's like we're going to this strange magical land where one person loses like half their mind, but everyone else is totally cool. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, so yeah, that definitely plays into like out of all the campaigns and other ways TCU is different. Like this one really cares about who the lead investigator is uh, because of. Um, the black throne and the implications like you have to think about usually in most campaigns it's like eh, maybe we'll decide based on order of like whoever has treachery cancellations and things like that but this is baked into the campaign like you really gotta think about who's gonna be lead yeah and i feel like it's gonna differ depending on the scenario because i th at least based on the plan that i think we're headed toward our lead for the beginning of the campaign to get the tarot cards is going to be different from the lead at the end to get screwed by black space. <laughs> by empty space. By space space? Yeah. Empty, sp empty, sp empty, space. empty space. Empty space. There it is. We found yeah. it. No, it's definitely space space. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty <laughs> sure that's, that's what it would write. Yeah. <laughs> space yeah. square. Double space. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> spacey that space thing from astral tides. Double space. Double space. Yeah. <laughs> Double space. Super space. <laughs> I regret my choice better. of words. Let's move on. <laughs> Hot controlled space. So we've mentioned the interactions of uh, treacheries with specific investigators, but I don't think we've actually said who any of us are playing. <laughs> yeah. That's so fair. I think that I think now that we've kind of talked about the big things we kept in mind we can talk mm -hmm. about how did we come to this party composition how did you choose the investigator that you chose and who you're playing so we could start off with sean who are you playing sean and 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 why well i guess before we delve into that uh, we should say we kind of decided on um everyone is flexing basically which is <laughs> which is different than we've done in the past yeah yeah, so, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the ability to flex is really important. I tend, even in 
high count multiplayer if i'm playing a kluver i still want a solution for like an acolyte or something like that just i Mm -hmm. i feel like that's baked into arkham dna you can totally specialize but i don't know i feel like it's generally a bad idea but even more so this campaign we're gonna flex um and i guess i waffled on who i was gonna play for a very long time uh i wanted to go diana because it was thematic but i already played diana and as much as i love her I do kind of want to mix up who I'm playing for each Iron, uh, Iron Man. So I, I put her to the side. Of course, my next bay was Agnes. I was raised Catholic, so the guilt of having to play Dark Memory in four-player gets to me too much. So I, I, I put <laughs> Agnes to the side. And eventually I kind of arrived at a place of, okay, like who can address the specific issues of TCU the best? And kind of what I arrived at was Patrice. And particularly a flexi Patrice that has as many tricks as possible to recur Alter Fate level 3. Because A, it's just an amazing card no matter what campaign you're playing. But the ability to just fast one cost get rid of a treachery in TCU is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's the Bedeviled Erect that's just ruining someone else's turn in their threat area or whether we're about to see the piper of azathoth and i just need to get rid of one of those treacheries and then we don't have to worry about the next one or fate of all fools fate Fate of of all fools fools. like if that hits the person who can't really take a lot of damage damage like that's a problem Mm -hmm. like there are just so many very specific problems that alter fate level three solves very quickly for a very low cost um So I figure Patrice can take it. She can get through her deck a couple times or more, depending on the scenario. Um, She can take things like I've got Resourceful in the deck to recur it. I've got uh, Prescient in the deck to recur it. So ideally, I should be able to play Alter Fate a bunch of times, meanwhile doing other Patrice-y awesome things. So Mm -hmm. uh, so my deck is pretty much just geared to to do that. And then I've also kind of leaned into uh, Granny Orn as my ally was, was kind of the impetus of this because not only does she help me with, with willpower and intellect, which is great, but she's kind of like a low key lucky on a stick where if, as long as I'm sitting at whatever location, everyone can be committing one less icon than they normally would because granny Orange got your back. And that's just, that's so good in multiplayer. So, yeah. Well, she's the, She's the you reduce the amount you fail by by one, right? No, not they get plus not one leveled skill. up one, not leveled up. Right, one. the leveled up, yeah, yeah. The leveled up one is the mm-hmm. the plus one, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. So the the leveled down one is what encouraged me to play dumb luck and look what I found two of, and I'm going to be leveling those up as well because they're great both in their in their level zero state and fantastic leveled up. Um, but yeah, I just think, I think I'm going to be playing mostly enemy mitigation. I'll have the option for clues. I'll be able to commit to whoever's tests that I'll need to commit to because my hand's going away each turn. Um, I just feel like Patrice is, is the pick that I want for this one. She's going to be playing a lot of mitigation and it's going to be pretty good. All right. Sweet. How about you, Scott? What do you, what did you settle on eventually? Well, I, I, as much as I, I rep Survivor, uh, I'm pretty class agnostic, and I don't, or role agnostic too. Like I, I don't, I'll play whatever. And so, I kind of figured like once you guys, once we had our team, I would fill in what we needed. And I realized we didn't have a seeker, and I think in four player you just need a seeker, like as just that person who can just take the big old Hoover and go get all the clues um, as needed. So I'm going to play Mandy um, because I have not played her yet, and we haven't played her yet in, in an Iron Man. Uh, but I'm doing 40 card, and I am doing 40 Survivor. card? Okay. I didn't get you to yeah. 50, but I have to acknowledge no. that getting you to 40 is an accomplishment. Yes. Well, oh, it hurts What's me. 10 more <laughs> cards, man? <laughs> Uh, the reason I went to 40 as well is I think, first of all, Mandy can handle it. And second of all, um, Occult Evidence, I think, is better in four-player. 
like in higher player counts and with the searching and stuff like that like the, the actual possibility of triggering it um and the reason i went with survivor is for uh fortuitous discovery um because because basically it's just amazing uh clue acceleration tech and so fortuitous discovery it's that myriad card right you get plus x investigation um or plus x intellect and discover x additional clues uh x is how many fortuitous discovery are in your discard pile but when you have scrounge for supplies and also resourceful and you can recur the third copy a whole bunch of times um i think it becomes an incredibly powerful effect to mix with seeker so how interesting that playing a yellow investigator and you're like you know what's really good clue acceleration tech these red survivors <laughs> yep. i mean i don't disagree hey, i totally agree with so, you i just think it's funny that it's like you're not a survivor and you're not like a, a rogue who can play survivor you're a seeker but you're taking the i red think cards. yes honestly i think that is the most on-brand thing that scott has ever done <laughs> that's true that's true i mean ev- survivor is everyone's favorite off class mm-hmm. it's true like mm-hmm. let, it just yeah so um but yeah you know it i'm kind of playing around with big hand mandy as well i've got the cilantro fragments and the uh arcane enlightenment so <laughs> <laughs> arcane enlightenment uh dream enhancing serum uh what else yeah all the big hand stuff and uh now the only thing i was thinking of well as well because um i threw this deck out there a couple days ago on our deck tech channel and someone's like you know, like Rogue Mandy is, I think, generally considered the best hmm. Mandy. Hmm. If you want to go by, I don't know, strength or however you want to measure it. And three aces <laughs> is really handy when you have to pass a test of 20. <laughs> possibly in a sixth scenario of a campaign. <laughs> just, um, just to name a random thing that might happen in any just, given campaign. If you had to pass a, a difficulty 20 test... <laughs> three aces would be a great way to pass it um and that person is not wrong uh we have to figure out how we're going to do that now (laughs) i mean (laughs) if yeah everyone being at the same location and committing a fuck ton of cards probably (laughs) yeah and like someone like well i mean maybe a premonition i would assume yeah and then like i'll i'm aiming to have higher ed and also eye of truth so i mean yeah. Speaking of higher ed, it probably bears mm-hmm. mentioning uh, at this point whether or whether or not we are playing taboo compliant. Mm-hmm. I believe we're all going taboo compliant. Yep. I yeah. was I was very close to not because my initial level zero build used drawing thin <laughs> um, because I wasn't abusing it. I was using it for real tests that have real consequences. <laughs> I like. Wow. I, w- <laughs> I like how that's your. You're like, I'm not playing Taboo because I'm not abusing this card. Like, <laughs> well, nice. Nice thin, way to I get like out of that. There's a re- uh, but either way, I ended up uh, I ended up taking that out because I went a little bit more spell heavy. So I'm going with the robes for, for some acceleration. So hmm. drawing thin hmm. is, is no longer a thing. So I'm, I'm Taboo compliant, so far as I know. Um, one thing, too, about Taboo is uh, MJ did tweet... I think it was a tweet, some social media, where he basically said there is a taboo um, change upcoming, and they're they're hoping to get it out before the next pack drops. Which who knows? This might be like Friday night <laughs> before, <laughs> before <laughs> <That'd> be <great>. <laughs> Iron Man. Um, and I am very afraid of what it could do to my dad <laughs> because I mean I am a person who plays Arkham Horror, the card game. And I'm very aware of what some of the more powerful cars are in the game. Why, you and... think Mandy would get hit for some reason? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, surely I, not. <laughs> I think she's a target. I think you there's still a lot plan of... on being able to run the deck at that point. It, uh, that was your expectation. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't well, think I anyone mean, would ca- cry foul. At watch that him point, sit right? down Saturday with <laughs> Ursula again. <laughs> I would never completely remake his deck the night before. <laughs> No, no, never. That I would never be make the most split decisions. Thing he's ever done. You're right. yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with it not dropping, but I'm also okay with it <laughs> dropping. I don't know. I, <laughs> whatever will be, will be. So. And this is actually our first time going taboo as a group. I think we've mostly followed it, but we've had we've broken it here and there. Yeah. I think we've always had the attitude like it's a long, like session, just do yeah. whatever. But mm-hmm. weren't we like accidentally <laughs> compliant last year? I I was um, intentionally compliant last year. Um, I, I played Diana drawing... without machete, so I was defiant or, or uh, compliant by default. <laughs> I had drawing thin like the first couple of uh, scenarios, but I didn't abuse it. Similar to what Sean mentioned, so that's also basically compliance. It, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think my only taboo card was higher ed. Okay, only so yeah. So yeah. You just gave yourself five. <laughs> All right, so we were, so as a team we yeah. were not compliant, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. But this, but we were pretty right. close. Yeah, we were pretty close. I I think. I think the card pools that like the mm-hmm. I mean the whole thing to me is like Iron Man the the difficulty is the you know playing an entire campaign during a day. The difficulty is not the game you're playing, right? Um obviously there is aspects of that especially now that we're entering, you know, like TCU, which I say is a tougher campaign. Um but and, and for someone to bring out all the weapons they have, you know, if you want to be non-taboo, I think that's absolutely fine um because you're going to need everything you've got to get through this day. But I think that the card pool is in such a place now, like there's so many options that regardless of what's on that taboo list, I think there's great decks oh, yeah. out there yeah, yeah. that don't even have taboo list cards in them, let alone use the tabooed versions of them. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just generally tend to enjoy taboo games more and the taboo card pool more. Um the fact that it takes out some of the cards that just kind of trivialize some parts of it so mm. yeah so um even though i don't think any of us would play degenerate decks it's still you know no, it's right. still a thing um for my part i decided to take on tony for iron man this time around i decided pretty early i think um, I did have a moment where Nacho, Nathaniel Cho, was turning my mm-hmm. head um, because I had a lot of fun with him. And he, similar to Tony, like uh, I'm basically taking on Tony as the main damage dealer. Even though we mentioned we're all flexing, so I had to include some flex cards in my deck for the times we're split up. Um, he's the primary damage dealer of the group, and so Nacho could have sim- played a similar role. But I decided to go with Tony. Um, because I play Tony a lot. I'm pretty comfortable with him. Uh, but I did decide to have my cake and eat it too a little bit. <laughs> because as I was playing around with Nacho and his fun new, uh, Guardian events, I had this moment where I said, well, wouldn't it be fun if I threw in double double <laughs> and used those Guardian Nacho events and doubled them up? <laughs> and so that is going to be the whole idea of this Tony deck is a lot of the cards that I'm working towards will be familiar to anyone who's played Tony. I'm going to be rocking Switchblade. I'm going to have Delilah O'Rourke, the Garot Wire. Um, and so just so anyone who's played Tony with some XP knows how much damage he can put down is ridiculous. But then mm-hmm. when you add Double Double to the mix and like do a Double Double One Two Punch... <laughs> you can, oh god yes yeah you can suddenly mm. get an idea of what you can do i did do a couple of tests uh with the deck and uh was able to take out some pretty high health enemies in a very short amount of time uh thanks to some of these events so i've like yeah so i have like one two punch in there um, I even have Monster Slayer in there, which doesn't make much sense at level zero, but once I have Double Double, it makes more sense. Because <laughs> mm. it's basically a, a cost zero that's going to be doing like four damage with one action, which is nothing to sneeze <laughs> at. So I think my only like concern really is getting to that Double Double because it is a one... Um, a one copy because it's exceptional mm. like i'm not too super concerned because like the deck functions fine without it like he'll still put down damage it just like elevates it so uh i do 
I am taking a route where I'm going to be taking on Relic Hunter so I can have both Garot Wire and uh, the upgraded Lucky Sig case. Yeah. And I think at that point, he's just going to be rocking it out and able to find the double double um, more quickly. So, yeah. Do, you, yeah. do you think you'll ever go to uh, double Relic Hunter just for double Lucky Cigarette case <laughs> and Garot Wire? <laughs> <laughs> or double garot wire. <laughs> double, 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 double. T- Tony has so many necks to hang all these accessories. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, he's taking them. Yo, dog, I heard you like wire. necks. <laughs> um, but I am just excited. I think he's going to be putting out crazy amounts of damage. And part of this, like like I said, I really have Black Throne on the mind. Like I know potentially we might need to face the Piper. Um, and I know we might need to face... I- <laughs> For some reason, I got this stuck in my head, but now I always call them tiny dancers. <laughs> but I think they're <laughs> mindless yeah. dancers. Yeah. Hold me close, I'm tiny dancers. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, that's going to have to be a song at some point, yeah. right? Like, just, I always think of them. mindless dancers. <laughs> They'll yeah. always empty be tiny space dancers. is empty. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep, got the next song. Yeah. <laughs> So, I'll be finished it by the end of this episode. Hold on. <laughs> I, I, you, you joke, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> he just goes on mute for a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Half hour, like 12 minutes. Yeah. So I'm pretty confident if the deck gets going that I could, you know, take out some of these tiny dancers in like a couple of actions, which would which would help. Um, yeah, the, only, the the other thing is just figuring out how, how much to flex. Like I have Intel report in there and followed um and i know scott you were asking me earlier like why no scene of the crime and it was basically because i'm reserving those guardian slots for the uh the damage events i can double Mm -hmm. double with no small amount of indignation did he ask that question (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i i like the way your deck looks uh casey and i were playing a campaign casey i forget which campaign it was but I was playing Guardian Tony, and the amount of damage, like we put out on that one, it was a boss enemy. Oh yeah! And- oh, it was when Carl. It was when Carl showed up in uh, Clutches of Chaos. And yeah, and was, I had the yeah, uh, Tony and Rita. He's got like twelve health or something, or some stupid high number. Uh, yeah. And yeah, for classes yeah, with like a lot. not the biggest weapons in the game. Granted, Tony is like more combat geared than a lot of other rogues but it was like yeah the dude didn't last around <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> yeah because rita rita came in like you know evaded him and like yeah punched her, i think i evaded twice. him and then plinked him twice with the bow or something all right because that was your shania twang deck <laughs> uh no shania twang is wendy Bo wendy <laughs> oh right rita bow is just uh i don't know i don't have a name Bo for rita. it but it, it was good yeah <laughs> But yeah, Tony, like, the damage he can put out with mm-hmm. Switchblade and Garot Wire and, like, all these extra actions and uh, the upgrade Derringer, mm-hmm. like... Oh, that was why, it, it, yeah, that was why I it, think, we just dumpstered on him. <laughs> yeah, because I think gu- Guardians tend to put out a lot of damage in three actions yeah. and Rogues just do the same amount of damage over seven actions. <laughs> 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 yeah so that was the glass cannon tone and with gusto crapped out though yeah yeah so I, i'm excited to watch you pilot that mm-hmm. Ian, because i think tony is a a delightful investigator to play and be around <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, i'm i'm looking forward to it and it's my first time in iron man playing a damage dealer because I played Safina first year, which was more like flex clue. And last year mm-hmm. I was doing all the evading pretty much with Rita. So now it's gonna be putting the hurt down. <laughs> um, <laughs> mm-hmm. So Nick, hey. um, Nick, hey. what's your situation? <laughs> so <laughs> what's, I... your, what's your fucking deal? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my god. Let's talk. So. Um, super great news, not Iron Man related yet, um, but super great news is that my wife and I bought a house. Um, hey, congrats. Thank you. Uh, the not so Nick, when are you moving? The not so great news <laughs> is that when the realtor was like, what date do you want to close on? And we were looking at the month of October and we're like, why don't we do it a week before my wife's birthday? So we'll close on October 22nd. And then like two and a half weeks ago, 
I'm looking at my calendar and I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, so there is a slight, big emphasis on slight. There is a slight chance that the seller will need to extend the closing date. Um, but I am currently planning on not being able to attend Iron Man because we will be moving that oh. weekend. So, unfortunately, despite me f- fighting tooth and nail to make sure Carolyn gets play this campaign, <laughs> that is not going to happen. Um, Justin will be playing in my stead. Uh, we crafted a, a, an Agnes deck for him um, that looks super fun. But unfortunately, I will have to sit this one out and maybe watch occasionally as I'm moving boxes from house to house. So you'll yeah. be sorely missed. Yeah. Well, thank you. I do appreciate that. And likewise, uh, before we started the episode, I, I said I, I think the worst part, like I love playing Arkham the whole time, like that whole day. That's awesome. But the thing I'm gonna miss the most is the fucking jokes and everything yeah. that come that just start mm-hmm. flying when all four of us are playing together for that long, and and especially like around like scenario because there's this big slump in energy around like scenario six but then scenario mm-hmm. eight kicks in and we're all like last year <laughs> we're, we're all, all standing around fuck. we're standing up around the table and just like we have all this energy suddenly because we're in the home stretch like i i'm gonna yeah. miss that i'm gonna miss that camaraderie and 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 the and all the comedy that comes about with it as well so I used those two words. I did mean those two words. I did not get them mixed up. Yes, both the camaraderie and the comedy. I'm a, I <laughs> Nick, I think I think you hit on something very important to the the energy of actually doing Iron Man in one one sitting, like it's intended. Much like the actual foot race, God, there's just, there's a wall that you hit, oh, yeah. and then once the end is in sight, it is it is just no holds barred. It is oh God, I'm so. Here's I'm, the thing. I'm excited to be able to play with Justin, but I'm I'm really sad you're not going to be there. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. Uh, but here's the thing, like that that's totally true because er, earlier in this episode, Scott was talking about boundary beyond, boundary beyond and our our strategy for that last year, and I'm sitting there thinking like. Did we play that? Did I play Boundary Beyond last year? <laughs> I have no memory of Boundary it's Beyond last year. Clutches of Chaos all over again. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's have I ever played chaos. Boundary Beyond? Have I? What is this? Is this a standalone? Did we is insert that, it? Is that the one with the snakes? <laughs> <laughs> no. So yeah, totally. Like scenarios five and six in an Iron Man is when you really start to like. That's when it becomes a slog, and you really have to power through it. So. Mm-hmm. So the the deck that you and I helped Justin build. Mm-hmm. Um, is a pretty straightforward Agnes deck. It really leans purple and it really leans hard into clue acquisition, though obviously it's Agnes, so she still has options for damage. Um, like Clairvoyance, Rite of Seeking, we've got Twyla, Catherine Price, or TKP, if you prefer, to, to prolong those spells' longevity. And then just like the decent set of, of Mystic Events uh, mm-hmm. to, to help her get through the day. Oh yeah, and Pete Sylvester because yeah, and the the standard Agnes horror suite of Pete and Forbidden Knowledge and Fearless. So, that, how can you not? It's mm-hmm. very straightforward, and I imagine it's going to be very effective because that's Agnes. Mm-hmm. So this is our first repeat investigator, isn't it? In Iron Man, mm-hmm. yeah, she was on the first. Yeah, I think it is. Casey's yeah, played, Agnes played this in the first one in Dunwich. Yep. Well, we only had ten characters back then. Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Perfect. Cool. Casey. So, yeah, Casey, I'm curious uh, both to hear who you're playing and, mm-hmm. like, what your group's composition is looking like, if you know at this point. Uh, we do know, in fact, uh, but because uh, it would be a team description for all four of us, I think I'll talk primarily for myself, but I'll talk about the, the whole team, I guess. Uh, so we had originally okay. said, hey, let's all kind of run flex, and you know what class is really great at flexing? Okay. Uh, Mystics <laughs> oh, no! joked around with running oh, no! uh, a purple party. Uh, and then that quickly faded when we realized that we actually wanted to play other characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that uh, at least some of us already play a lot of Mystics when mm. we play the game. Uh, I feel so, baited. I, well, I'm sure one year uh, there will be a purple party. <laughs> Who knows what it is? I think, Nick, you're on the hook now for Carolyn next year. If I understand. Unless <laughs> for property. Dreamside, right? Next year yeah. would be the Dream Dream Eaters. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, assuming it ever happens, yeah. I feel like <laughs> Dreamside right. Carolyn's the way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, 
yeah, so we, we realized that we were quite excited uh, to play the new characters from uh, Innsmouth. And mm-hmm. uh, just unprompted, three of the four of us chose a unique investigator. So I have selected Trish, uh, one of my favorite characters from this setting. Uh, and I guess anyone that's watched <laughs> me uh, in any of our RP mm. uh, campaigns knows that I love uh, spies and <laughs> sneaky people. <laughs> so uh, I am playing her... Uh, Pretty much uh, as strict a clover as you can go without getting into uh, the degenerate nature of her uh, yellow access. I know you have not spoken about the box much, if at all, on the podcast, so I won't go into specific uh, spoilers. No, we can talk about player cards. Player cards are fine. You're fine. Yeah. Player, okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, spoiler alert here. Trisha's ability <laughs> to uh, combine investigating and. Uh, you know, either compressed actions in the form of, you know, getting an extra clue or uh, automatic evasion of an enemy on a location with a clue. Uh, so I have lots of uh, ways to cheat clues out, uh, you know, without provoking attacks or to double them up. Uh, and that will be my contribution to enemy management, <laughs> uh, which uh, Dexter, Sister Mary, and uh, Daisy will have to deal with the wake of exhausted witches I will leave behind me. <laughs> <I think. laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so this, I, I, I imagine that her, her, you know, the, the, her, her place in the campaign will be similar to, to Ursula's, you know, in, in that sort of party comp where mm. you just want to get up and go as soon as possible, you know? Uh, we, mm-hmm. our, our other characters, uh, I, I guess, uh, Sister Mary, who Josh is playing, uh, he's kind of leaning into the, the blessed, uh, stuff that we've got, or the blessing stuff that we've got access to out of the box, uh, to hopefully smooth out the chaos bag for the lot of us. Uh, Justin, uh, is playing, uh, Daisy, and then Mike is, uh, Dexter. So, none of us, so far, at least, with the, uh, the cards released, uh, from the box, you, you can't put too much of a comprehensive blessing or... Mm. Uh, curse deck together quite mm-hmm. yet, uh, but the stuff that's there, I mean, blessings are basically always good. Uh, yeah. And uh, we've got, I guess, just the one person who's going to eat shit on treacheries, uh, much like Tony in your own party. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, correct. <laughs> my, my plan for that uh, also was to make myself, ki- try to make myself immune to the stuff that I expected to draw. So, I try to avoid having lots of activations uh, on cards, meaning that uh, either Bedeviled or whatever the one that prevents you from using them, you know, oh, would just yeah. be a free uh, free draw for me. Uh, and in going through the treacheries, there's really not a ton of scaling failure stuff over the course of the campaign, meaning like Rotting Remains, uh, mm-hmm. you know, take horror for each point of failure. There, there isn't a ton of that stuff. Uh, but within my deck and then within uh, Daisy, we've got logical reasonings. Uh, of course, the people that can run it have you handle this or other forms of <laughs> cancellation to make these other people's problems. Uh, mm-hmm. Just kind of the your usual rogue uh, avoid uh, the problem <laughs> strategy, I think. <laughs> is it uh, sad that only just now am I realizing that obfuscation is super a Trish card and not at all a Dexter card. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it just kicks it's, ass. It's, <laughs> really, <laughs> I, I have to... it's really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's her real signature cards. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you mean the four agility icons, isn't <laughs> I actually quite like In the Shadows as an aside. I, th- I think it's, you know, basically a level zero elusive. In the um, Shadows. Is that a song? No one. Anyway, all right. That was yeah. a song in like 2000. <laughs> no one? Okay. Ch- nope. Check out the Rasmus. It was a good album. It was right. a decent album. It, it was all right. Okay. Casey is one of your first pickups, um, Lola Santiago. Yeah, one of my first uh, buys. Uh, so I have, uh, I guess I can post my upgraded deck, uh, or what I am hoping to have by campaign end. Uh, yeah, uh, first buy uh, will be an adaptable and hopefully two copies of The Good Lola, uh, just to keep the true cl- <laughs> tr- clue train uh, chugging along. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I think, you know, much Fast, like... Fast, discover uh, a clue and evade an enemy seems okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really pay, pay money and get several things at once that are all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, what, it's like when Stella fails a test. It's like Trish getting a clue. Yeah, you activated my trap yeah. card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so my strategy for treacheries uh, is to hopefully not <laughs> have stuff that is affected by them. Uh, <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. certainly is a way to go. Holy crap, all the dots on Streetwise. That just hurts to see that. <laughs> There's a lot of dots. That's like two yeah. scenarios. It's a, uh, it, it would done be a which, maybe. Sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, eight experience is a lot. It's mm-hmm. like a scenario it and is. a half, ideally. Yeah. yeah, I was considering Streetwise, even though I haven't used it in a while, just for maybe some of those circle tests, like if I buy it around there, or, mm-hmm. you know, helping get clues and be a black throne. My, my I, strategy I, for dealing with treacheries, by the way, is for you all to, uh, I'm just going to point at them and you mm-hmm. do the test and get rid of <laughs> just them. Just so, yeah, <laughs> so, so for our team, it probably bears asking, obviously when we're split up, we're split up, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. when we're not... We're probably still going to move in pairs. I think the original plan was for me to stick to Carolyn. Womp womp. But since Carolyn has been replaced with Agnes, I don't think that's as effective. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Agnes maybe sticks with Tony? And, and I'll go with Mandy, so that way someone can hit a willpower test no matter what happens. It's probably the best way to yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. Seems fine. Seems about right. I'll look that I think Mandy I'll have like if I get higher ed, I can pretty much pass any oh, yeah, yeah, any yeah. willpower test needed. <laughs> so I mean there are the ones that require you to take an action to take willpower though, and that's what I'm gonna be pulling off you because my actions right. are your actions at this point. Right. That's how you play yeah. support in Arkham. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you play and support I, I, <laughs> And I you know, I mean we kinda of, like last year with Ursula being the, the big clover on the team it really worked well when it was like there's one super clue person mm-hmm. and everyone else just kind of like gets stuff away from them like, so mm. that they can just like just, yeah. and just grab I, everything. I feel like how you play support in Arkham is that you just like, okay, however I make your life easier, that's what I do. Whether mm. it's, it's pulling treacheries off you or like spending my two actions to get rid of your signature weakness, thank you very much. Uh, I, I feel like that's that's generally the way to go. So that's kind of what I'm geared toward is just whatever clover I'm attached to, I just make your life as easy as possible. Because hmm. mm-hmm. you're essentially then turning your actions into... Like, Patrice is decent at getting clues, but I wouldn't call her someone who... You could build her as a clover, but she's not in that upper echelon of no, clover. No, you know what I'm talking about? She's a little if, less consistent yeah. in that way, for sure. We can and think so of you're... her as Mandy's auxiliary hand. <laughs> <laughs> My free card. <laughs> you are not wrong at all. <laughs> Hang on, let me check my backup hand. Sean? Mm-hmm. I've, I've tested this deck in two-player, and half the time I'm committing my leveled-up uh, look what I found to another person's oh. test. Mm-hmm. So that is that is fully accurate. Y- you're basically Scott's caddy for the yep. campaign. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'd use a different word, but that's that's accurate. Banana I, rider. I, uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm playing two-handed man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god. This is great. I love this so much. <laughs> um, but okay, so. Your the the value of Patrice's actions in getting <laughs> clues, you can change those into Mandy actions essentially. Yeah. <laughs> when playing support, right? Like the support person is basically saying, "I am spending my action mm-hmm. to get a more effective action in a couple actions." For mm-hmm. you're basically mm-hmm. just running interference for whoever's actually doing the work. Yeah, you're a lead blocker mm-hmm. to take a football reference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's <laughs> delve into the plan. <laughs> um, 90 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got there. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. I think... That was just the prologue. Yeah, that we was the did. prologue. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. And now we're delving into the meat. Um, but I think everything we talked about is kind of going to inform some of these decisions here. Mm-hmm. So I guess for our listeners... I created this spreadsheet that tried to outline, like, what are the major choices in each scenario. And I tried to think about what's the optimal plan. Um, 
But this is our first chance as a group to really get together and talk about it. And of course, Casey might have a different perspective on some of this stuff. So even though this is the plan, it's not set in stone. So we're going to see what we see and see whether we agree. But I'll say to start off that <clears throat> pretty much the biggest, like I mentioned before, the biggest thing I had in mind was Beyond the Black Throne. And so what I considered to be the optimal path was the one that was going to prioritize giving us the most tally marks for that last scenario. Mm -hmm. um, if it's been a while since you played TCO, TCU, the tally marks are like currency that you can cash in basically in Black Throne to do things like switching around locations and empty spaces and etc. And I've generally found them pretty useful to potentially get you out of situations that you wouldn't be able to get out of otherwise. And so that was the path that I kind of prioritized while also looking at a few other factors, trying to think about what gives us the best chance. Um, but generally there's like three main paths. It's either you kind of just say F you to the lodge every chance you get and just side with the witches. Uh, you can go full, full lodge mode, or you can kind of go the deceitful route and pretend to be part of the lodge and... Well, but you really you're lying around along the way um <clears throat> you can kind of do a mix of all those but those are the three main paths um but ultimately after going through everything the path that gives us the most tally marks for black throne is being enemies of the lodge the whole way through Woo! Uh, hashtag witch life for life <laughs> As we learned in our newly host game, <laughs> right. something we're all on board for. So, <laughs> not to the for drugs. the win. <laughs> Choose the lodge yeah. guys or the coven. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go scenario by scenario and break it down. Um, so scenario one, the witching hour. There's a choice before the first scenario even begins, which is to accept your fate and reject your fate. And I feel like this. <laughs> this is the first choice and this potentially might be our most contentious choice of whether to accept fate and reject the fate i currently had us down as accepting the fate um i, I call not it on taros it gives us the simple uh thing is it, it gives us a tally mark if you reject your fate you don't get that so that's what i had down hmm. um the lead gator has to add the tower uh, the tower weakness and ace of rods yay weakness to their, to their deck <laughs> the ace of rods weakness yeah. <laughs> yeah you can choose not to add it right the ace of rods mm, don't think so i know nope, you have to take sure the <laughs> package <laughs> hence the weakness and, and Here, MJ's, take MJ's this like present. nobody's gonna play this anyway so <laughs> so uh, thoughts about my that. argument my argument for accepting fate is then one investigator who you know it very well could be me and that's fine i don't mind actually um just has to deal with the tower mm -hmm. and the ace of rods mm -hmm. um but <laughs> deal with the tower and but otherwise we have the elder things in the bag which everyone has to deal with for the entire campaign yeah. um, and they're particularly brutal when everyone is at level zero they're just always bad they're not yeah. great <laughs> right like like looking at um like going over your list in like in before the black throne minus six <laughs> and if you fail or sorry if your modified skill value for this is zero it essentially is an ancient evils yeah like it just it's terrible and i just don't want to have those like the adds breaches oh my god uh if it's a circle test and you fail Re resolve haunted like they're just so terrible um yeah, yeah and for the greater good if you fail move one doom from a cultist directly to the agenda <laughs> no. yeah it's no yeah yeah so that was definitely one of the things i looked at and i think last year is when we really started looking in depth at like what what tokens are the best to add to the bag because it actually <laughs> matters a lot and so like some of the tablet effects aren't great either mm. but it's ultimately just kind of weighing them against each other like the tablet and black throne is minus three if you fail azathoth attacks you that's not great but at least it's a negative three versus a negative six right yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if we can't be consistently three up by the last scenario in the campaign i don't know what we're doing right yeah 
If we can't be consistently negative or uh, up by six, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play this anymore. What actually <laughs> are we doing with our lives? Yeah, <laughs> my team's just a team of scrubs. <laughs> Okay, um, sounds like we're generally in agreement. I, I really at first was going in thinking, like, how can I finagle this so we reject our fate? So we have to deal with the tower, but... I think we just have to, like... Yeah. It, it's fine. <clears throat> it's... Look, as long as it's not me dealing with the tarot cards, I'm fine accepting our fate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it won't be Patrice. And so that choice of accepting or rejecting fate kind of plays into... Uh, what route you take because I'm skipping ahead to the very end but the very end of the campaign is if you accept your fate you have to have certain mementos in hand to Mm -hmm. win the campaign straight up and if you reject your fate similar you have a different set you have to get and if you don't you still win the campaign but you get a question mark and I didn't want that question mark so (laughs) win the campaign? I can see Yeah, so I wanted a straight up win so that put us on the route of uh, of going Team Witch as well. So that means in Witching Hour, we're aiming to um, defeat Annette rather than discovering the clues. Because um, that give us, gives us uh, one of the mementos we're going to need later for the, for the Accepting Your Fate ending. So we need Mesmerizing Flute and Ritual Components, right? Yep. Eh? Which I think okay. is generally like defeating a net with the investigators we have. Like I don't think that should be a big, a big deal. I mean, that's your job. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell us, Ian. Just a snicker snack switchblade. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Witches get stitches. <laughs> but we're on your team. <laughs> yeah. We're just asserting dominance. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll join. We'll we'll join your team. Um. Okay, so scenario two at death's doorstep. So the big choice here is whether we try to engineer the great Silver Lodge Twilight Great Escape and get them <laughs> out, or whether we just punch Joseph in the face and uh, Yosef and leave him to his uh, death. And since we're going enemies of the lodge, we're just gonna kill him. Don't worry about parlaying him. We're just gonna kill Yosef. And by kill, you mean just let him die. That is uh, always well, an option. XP yes, on him, though, doesn't he? If we, if, if the the watcher happens to be drifting in the right direction, we're just gonna <laughs> let it happen. Just, yeah. just go, go for it. Yeah. Let, let nature take its course. Yeah, that's yeah. Which means that does I feel like free us up a little bit to uh, go VP hunting and death doorstep a little bit. Mm-hmm. Which I will encourage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because we miss out on the 2VP from rescuing Joseph. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll want to get the max and make up for that. Um, and this makes Death's Doorstep a lot easier. It really too. does. Because mm. trying to escort everyone out is just the worst. Because the Acolytes are so stupid! <laughs> yeah. It takes it takes nothing to kill them, and they only move one... They, they move the same speed as everyone else. So, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. Um, so that takes us to interlude to the price of progress, which we don't have anything to do because uh, they'll just get mad at us for killing Yosef. So <laughs> we refuse to be part. Um, that also means we avoid a- adding any cultists to the bag, which generally I like because cultist tokens are usually like to be the reveal another token. And I hate that. I hate the reveal yeah. of token <laughs> effects. Especially because Agnes is playing Premonition, and when you Premonition oh. uh, Agnes <laughs> reveal another token, it's just like... Agnes and Patrice uh. are playing Premonition, so there's going to oh, be a yeah. lot of times where it's like, oh, draw the cultist. Oh, well, thanks for fucking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so then we get into some scenario called The Secret Name. Uh, <laughs> Whoa! We're halfway there. Sorry. This is so, the scenario off. that never ends. <laughs> this is going to be... Um, yeah, there's not too many choices to make since we're not members of the Lodge. We don't have... Normally, you have to decide whether to tell them about stuff, but they're not talking to us. So, again, we avoid another cultist added to the bag, potentially. 
Um, and really the only quote unquote, it's not really a choice. It's just, we want to at least get to act two so that we can get the black book. Um, mm-hmm. but ideally we would beat the scenario. So we get uh, three mementos worth because ultimately we're trying to get six mementos total, which will net us two tally marks and black throne. Now, so it, was a can... little, it was a little bit more interesting when Carolyn was part of the group, but now that mm-hmm. she's not, who's getting the black book? Mm. It's not me, because ideally I'll be playing like three wards of protection per game. That's a good question, actually. It's not me, hmm. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'd hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's either Agnes or... Or I suppose Mandy. Uh, willpower and intellect. When you play a card, exhaust black book and take X horror. Um, I could take it. I mean, those are the those are the icons I will be using in the game. So, yeah, so I, think... I just I just completed a test run of TCU with Agnes and Carolyn. Agnes taking the black book with Carolyn in tow is amazing, and I highly recommend everyone try that in two player at some point. But in four player without Carolyn, I don't know. It still <laughs> seems pretty okay Peter. to be just be able to proc her damage when you play something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And technically, we don't have to take the book, but the taking the book does give us a tally mark again. Um, it also adds a skull to the bag, but eh, I think on balance, it's a it's a good trade. But those are those effects. Um, those happen even if you don't add it to your deck, right? Skulls? Skulls are always around. Uh, the black book, it's basically a skull to, uh, if you choose to take it. Right, okay. Yep. I mean, I'll take it if no one else will, because I can always commit it. We can, we can figure that out. Some no, let's, some... let's figure it out right now. Let's keep talking about this. <laughs> we got it. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so it's funny because... No one thought you were being serious, Nick. (laughs) (laughs) We must decide now. Um, Secret name is like that scenario we kind of dread, but there's actually not a lot of choices to make or implications really just beyond like we kind of want to beat it, but we'll see what happens. No guarantees. (laughs) It, It pretty much scales depending on how well we do like... Act if you get to Act Three, you get some more stuff, and yeah. beating it, you get the most. So mm-hmm. do the best we can. That's all we can do. Um, let's just beat it. Yeah, let's yeah. just do it. It'll be easy, no problem. Who's gonna be BJ Bait? Is the only real. <laughs> <laughs> I missed my cue, didn't I? <laughs> you did. <Yes. laughs> this is your prompting. So uh, I didn't want this to be the case, and I didn't. I didn't luck into this. It just well, no. I did luck into it. It was there was no intent. But Brown Jenkin hops into play quite often in four player. It turns out, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, will rob someone of their hand. And since I'm building my deck with the idea of being robbed of my hand every turn, chances are I'm gonna be BJ Bait for the entirety of this scenario. <laughs> Once again, Brown Jenkin <laughs> chooses Sean. <laughs> As it should be. Yeah. yeah. Sean made choices that he wasn't even thinking about. <laughs> subconsciously. Or understanding. Subconsciously. And asked Brian, or Brian, Brown Jenkin to... Uh, <laughs> Brian Jenkin. Brian <laughs> Jenkin. <laughs> That's definitely his first name is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brown Jenkin just with like a shirt and tie. <laughs> he's gotten out of the witch business he's like trying to find a respectable career and, yeah. i'm in financing now yeah that's but the ideally that works in the offices <laughs> ideally how it's going to work for me in secret name is i'll be attached to likely scott's hip um and and either commit cards to his tests or or use them on my own and then I guess end a, a location away so that Brown Jenkins comes and robs my hand, but mm, we'll see how it works in practice. But we'll figure it out. Ideally, I'm going to be tanking Brown Jenkins because I'm least affected by it. Yeah, there's always that question of whether you keep him on the board or keep like 
whacking that mole every time he appears. But I think if we can just tank him, there's that one card. I think it's Meddlesome Familiar. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. if he's not on the board, he just comes back out anyway and deals the damage. Um, if he is on the board, then it'll just bring out some rats. But hopefully, Swole Tony rats. And Co can just kill those swole rats. So we'll see. Um, Wages of Sin, we talked a little bit about earlier, but pretty much... Turn one, resign. (laughs) That's an option. Pretty much we want one heretic at at least. Like, one to three heretics will just get you the same memento, which is the Wisp, which we want. The Wisp of Spectral Mist. Mm -hmm. If we get all of them, that gives you a fancy corn husk doll, which does something in Black Throne, but... I think for our purposes, we just kind of get one and done. Um, it does mm-hmm. affect how much doom you have in uh, uh, potentially, but I think yeah, I think it's one heretic is what we're shooting for. So my question, especially remains like if we run out the doom clock in in this scenario, it doesn't matter as much as I think it does in other scenarios, right? <laughs> it doesn't, but. Like, here's my argument, and it's kind of what, you know, has been the whole Iron Man thing ever since, is the the issue is not the scenario, it's the time we have to play it. Sure. So, do we just grab one heretic, slam them into whatever room they need to go in, <laughs> and then just all go and resign, play Delve Too Deep or something, I don't know, and then just accept it? I think it's a pretty easy scenario to like call an audible on. If we're doing well and we get one, and we're going to get the, yeah. the, moment, the memento we need, and it's pretty easy to be like, all right, we should move on, or we shouldn't, because <laughs> this heretic it spawned at the completely opposite end of the map, yeah. like they always do. Every single time. <laughs> Every time. Um, yeah, I guess you're right. It could be kind of like how Boundary Beyond was was for last year's Iron Man because you we were like, okay, let's just get three. And then we got to three. We're like, okay, we so maybe ten. we can do five. Yeah. So how far yeah. do we press our luck? And then yeah, that's how those scenarios work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we can kind of play it by ear a little bit. Um, for the greater good is the next one. And this is not so much choices that need to be made, but just like the scenarios kind of very different depending on which route. So we're doing the enemies of the lodge route, which means instead of like going in and pretending to be part of it and dealing, dealing with a lot of parlays, we're going in there on like a sneak mission and killing them and getting out and ultimately the goal of the the scenario is the same trying to get the puzzle box asset um before time runs out so i i haven't mentioned it up to this point because i feel like at this point i probably will have upgraded but it's it's worth mentioning that i will i will be running level zero dumb lux in my deck up to this point so outside of whatever we need to do for the first scenario for Scott to take the tarot cards, probably mm-hmm. probably Tony will be our lead investigator. Uh, yes, question mark? The reason I ask Where- is because if I haven't upgraded up to this point, which I, I think mm-hmm. in my upgrade path, unless we're doing horribly, I should be fine. Um... There's like, is there ever a reason you want to kill a cultist that has a doom on it in this one? Because it'll always transfer one over, right? Yeah, I don't think you ever want to kill them. Okay, that's simple. You want to parlay and yeah. At least if they have doom on them, because there's some enemies that don't come out with doom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, sometimes Those you're are... just forced to, but yeah, in general, especially with four players on the board, I think we can maneuver that. Um, the one thing is, like, the enemies of the Lodge route kind of rewards evading, um, a bit, because Nathan Wick, who is, like, the boss, quote-unquote, at the end, uh, you can evade by three or more is kind of one of the triggers to get what we need, um, and also, like, after you evade an enemy, you can remove Doom, um, but I don't think necessarily we have a big time evade person. I think we have some people who can potentially do some evading, but we don't necessarily have a dedicated evade person. I think that's no, accurate. Don't. 
Yeah. Which I, 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 two, I don't... Twos and threes? Innovate? <laughs> yeah, definitely not Tony. I know that much. <laughs> yeah. Agnes will be hitting a four in Evade when she gets Peter down. Mm. Um, okay. But even and, still. Like, but, uh, you know, that's not big time by any right. means. That's that's the starting line for most other investigators. <laughs> right. Access to Miss Avrilia and uh, mm. what's the uh, evasion? Ephemeral? Ethereal. For, uh, ethereal, yeah. Could just go ethereal. Actually, Ooh, yeah, that's not a bad more, idea. Ethereal form just for that guy. Yeah, or adaptable and a decoy. That won't get take care of Nathan, but he's probably elite anyways. Mm. Well, we have to evade by three or more. Uh, but to remove ethereal the form is add, so... Like, you add will to your agility. Yeah, I mean... Right, sorry, I was thinking about uh, decoy. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, yeah. Evade, yeah, but that's just for Nathan, right? Or is that for yeah. all of the doom removal? Uh, the Nathan is just the evade by three, but in general, yeah. if you evade an enemy, then you can remove the doom. Uh, so, seems like ooh. an adaptable decoy. Uh, yes, then. Yeah, so I think this is one scenario to keep an eye out for upgrades or swaps. Yeah, mm-hmm. any evade tech could be good right before this one, if you're doing the enemies route anyway. Is our, is the, is Justin's Agnes build running ethereal form? Currently, no, but we could okay. potentially flex it in. Well, you I could need flex to until it here. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, if he's if he's got Peter, especially upgraded Peter by that point, mm-hmm. he's rocking ten. You know, six and that's four. That's a big number. That's a big number. Yeah. That's not terrible. So after greater good, <laughs> which I, I think we can handle for the most part, um, okay. the doom can sometimes spiral out, but I'm not too too worried. Famous last words. Um, <laughs> Again, the inner circle, this is an interlude we don't care about because it only we have to make a choice if we're members of the Lodge, so we just skip right past that um, <laughs> and go to Union and Disillusion. Um, and this is pretty much making the choice at the beginning of who to side with, whether the Coven or the Lodge, and given everything else we've done, that's pretty much an easy choice to side with the Coven at that point. Um, but basically that means we're having to unlight the lights instead of lighting the lights, <laughs> which uh-huh. mechanically is not a huge difference, yeah. but yeah, I think approximately zero. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds mathematically correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I just off the top of my head, I just rough numbers in my head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> approximately zero. Um, so what, which side, um, you take? And what you've done before kind of influences who pops out at the end of the scenario at the ghost trap. In our case, we're going to be seeing uh, silver twilight enemies shuffled into the encounter deck, which is Uh is fine. We will get Joseph Meager if he's not dead, but he'll he'll, he'll be dead. (laughs) Yes. He'll be thoroughly dead. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, so I think that's going to be pretty straightforward as far as, like, choices to make. We're just, uh, I, that scenario is going to be all about those circle tests. And so Mm -hmm. I haven't, I need to look, take an eye to my uh, icon distribution in my deck, but because of how it's built, I don't have a ton of icons to throw around. So that's one, that's one place I was thinking of maybe if I have enough XP, I could take streetwise before that scenario. Yeah, that'd yeah. be a good get. I think I'm going to try and aim to get higher ed before Union Disillusion. Probably, like, probably a good get, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the puzzle box, that's the one that can light and unlight a brazier. Yeah, it mm-hmm. gives you, like, Correct. one success. Just one of them. As not Nick all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so do we save that for the 20? Like, the, the big 20 test? Yeah, it's always a tough choice of when to use that thing. Yeah, it can also be used to like throw damage on the guy, which I don't, the watcher, which I don't think is yeah. useful for our, our right. Group. Yeah, but I I don't think he's gonna be a very difficult enemy to manage, especially if you're like right on top of me and like for you to put out five damage in a turn mm-hmm. once every two turns is not. That's, yeah, it's not a, bad. Especially That's since, easy. like, every single one of us is built to pick up any slack. Mm. Yeah. Like, even if you miss a test, someone will be able to help it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think in general we probably save it for the last one, but like the last one is also easy to pile on as a group. Um, I, yeah, I think we have to play it, but like in solo, I know I've been forced to use it because sometimes you get that bad matchup of a circle test with whatever mm -hmm. solo gator you have, and you just yep. kind of have to use it before the last one. Mm -hmm. But that might not, not a problem be in four as player. true. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, after we win, Annette, Annette Mason is going to be possessed by evil, um, as you do. And <laughs> for those uh, groups that are choosing to take the short route, this is the point at which their campaign would end if they are going full lodge. Um, <laughs> they could be if right they're here. cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Any win, I mean, any win is a win. No shame. Yes. Finishing is winning. So, I think we decided pretty early on we didn't want to do that because we wanted the full Iron Man experience of all eight right. scenarios. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going by the, the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. <laughs> yeah. Although also we were... fuck the lodge first of all. Yes, yeah. <laughs> first exactly. and most importantly. <laughs> I mean, if it was at the actual event center, we might have been tempted, so we could duck out early <laughs> yeah, for some yeah. food, but... <laughs> well, it's 6 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, in the clutches of chaos, um, I know you've never heard Nick, of this spoilers. scenario, Nick. <laughs> no. Yeah, what? Spoilers. So, spoilers. I thought, are you guys inserting standalones into this campaign? <laughs> this is a custom scenario. I'm confused what's going on. It's going to be a hell of a um, thing when we start inserting side scenarios into an Iron Man. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's giving me sweats just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in the Clutches of Chaos, the big thing is just that uh, kind of it just determines who you're going to have to fight, whether Annette Mason is possessed or Carl is possessed. In our case, Annette is possessed. So we're going to have to take her on. She's going to be a five fight, six per investigator health. So that's 24. Um, three evade, alert, and hunter. Um, three damage and one horror. And uh, so this is one thing I did look at is when looking at the past too, is which of these ones is easier to face. Like I've, I kind of rather have the alert hunter Annette, even if, uh, her fight's a little higher uh, versus like the retaliate on Carl Sanford. Mm -hmm. Even his fight is four versus five, but he has that retaliate, which I'd rather just have a higher fight person with no retaliate and just yeah. kind of chop away at them. <laughs> That's pretty much it for the setup choice. Um, and then the other thing is I've never played this one beyond two players and since this is often called the pandemic scenario I'm wondering how the, has it, have any of you played this one four players before? <laughs> nope. I haven't gone beyond two myself, no. Scott, we've done it. Yeah, we had four players. We, we, we talked about it, or that was the, the blanket party for Carl Sanford. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which now, now okay. that I see so, that he had 24 health, party. I'm extremely impressed with us. <laughs> yeah so uh, I, I i think he was around for two turns but yeah like it was yeah we spawned him and then just killed him then yeah okay yeah uh sorry sean you were saying no i it just i definitely ever played two player and i roll a die for the incursion test mm -hmm. uh, yeah anyway yeah it it's very swingy in two player so I can only imagine that it gets worse in four player where there's probably like two locations where you're like, oh, my God, please don't place additional resources here. And then, of course, that is that's just what's going to get rolled. So, um, yeah, I remember, Casey, our, our game mm -hmm. was very chaotic and it was like, oh, and panicked. the very clutches of it. <clears throat> yeah. Damn it, Casey got there first, and it was better. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. We had Min, Tony, Rita, and Jim, right? Yes. So we had at least two people. There is a particular uh, willpower treachery in this one that I did not mention earlier when we were talking about the, the vulnerability to treacheries. Um, so I would think that in a, a larger group, you would have, you know, 
possibly more exposure or like more breaches uh, being placed per round, but you would also have a different stat profile to be able to remove them. Whereas if you just have like two people or, you know, two characters and they, they maybe, you know, none of, neither of them have a, a combat higher than three or whatever, and there's just a location, no one's going to be able to deal with it, right? Because it's just a test that they can't uh, confront. So here, I, I feel like in a, a nice diverse party, uh, maybe uh, y you can have people kind of camp the locations that they can easily clear with breaches. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is yet another scenario in this <laughs> campaign that <laughs> encourages spreading out in the map. But yeah. Like in solo, that's one of those things where you kind of have to mm -hmm. run around like a chicken trying to put out all these fires but yeah i think people can hit the ones that they're best able to do mm -hmm. um okay I, i'm really sad that nick's not gonna get to play this with us oh, no. <laughs> it would have been a nice first experience yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. I, I was really excited yeah. to to get through that yeah. blind blind playthrough of clutches yeah good yeah womp womp um, and so the resolution choice is what to do with Annette after we've defeated her. And pretty much the only choice that makes sense is to ask her help to fix this because that gives us, uh, what is it? Two tally marks, which is a lot. It also adds a negative four to the bag, but we get the two tally marks and that's, um, I think that's helpful and worth adding the negative four to the bag. Otherwise, a lot of these other one, uh, options that you can do if you have certain traits, like arresting Annette if you're a detective over police, or having you teach spells of old like if you're a sorcerer, sadly doesn't really do anything. And I hope this is addressed in uh, the return version. Uh, mm. Agnes it, it, is a sorcerer. Yeah, it'd be fun if you got an actual spell book from Annette or something, mm -hmm. like a cool sp or a spell asset or something. But we'll have to wait till the return version. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, man, that'll be so badass to see the, like, high-end, would-cost, like, four experience exceptional cards, each from Sandy and, and Annette. That would be really cool. Yeah. Make it happen, MJ. We're waiting. Or like the Carl Sanford, if you take control of the Silver Twilight Lodge, all of a sudden you have some Lodge yes, minions to exactly. control. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, imagine like a an ally that's Myriad, and it's like just the, the acolyte. <laughs> an ally that's Myriad. Yeah. yeah. I dig it. All right. Only, take, only takes up one ally slot, yeah. like no matter how many of them you have out. You could just pile them on each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we'll be asking her for assistance, and then that'll lead us into Before the Black Throne, and if we follow everything we've done here, we'll be going into Black Throne with, um, six tally marks to work with. Nice. Now, how do we get Doom Draws ever closer? Uh, Where is that in the story? Doom Draws ever closer is if you mess up. It's like a fail condition of, I forgot what scenario it is. I think it might be Clutches of Chaos, actually. I think it's clutches. Yeah. Because <clears throat> that gives us two tally marks. Yeah, so if you mess up, it kind of uh, helps you and throws you a bone by giving you some tally marks. Oh, but if you succeed, you can ask Annette for e assistance. Yeah, exactly. So it's like making up for not getting that, basically. Okay, so... And more. Wait a minute, though. Asking Annette for assistance gives us a, gives us a minus four and two tally marks. <laughs> you are correct. Doom draws yes. ever closer... Gives us two tally marks and no minus four. Yes, I know we're <laughs> if we tank in the clutches of chaos. Um, Does clutches of chaos have a resign on the opening location? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying because I'm, if it does, I'm yeah. trying to remember what the uh, the penalty for failing was. Let me see. It's no negative four. Talk amongst yourselves. Um. Oh my god! It has a resign. Okay, I remember that art, but I don't remember anything else. Oh my god, I, I, sure. That art <laughs> also looks like you can just sure, have Justin get a uh, blood packed, and then just <laughs> yeah, and then just, <laughs> just get us out of here. Blood packed in Renfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call that the old Renfield resign. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, maybe we have to doom out or something. Anyways, that might be a discussion to have, like <laughs> to avoid the negative if, four. Yeah, whether well, gonna, I, I think I remember like a trauma? considering that, and there's a reason why I chose not to, which I didn't capture. I was trying to. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, we'll 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 figure <laughs> Tell it out. Marks. We'll talk. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's because all I care about is R one, like the story <laughs> along the way. Who cares, right? Like just whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's Iron Man. Yep. Um, so Black Throne. So this is where everything we've done is really going to play out. We'll have six tally marks based on the mementos we got that prevent some of these effects. Like if you have Gilman's journal. Uh, if you don't have Gilman's journal, you get moved around the map. If you have the worn crucifix, and if you don't have the worn crucifix, a wraith will attack you and do some damage and horror. Um, the both of those we should be able to get. The corn husk doll is the one you only get if you get all the uh, the ghosts and wages of sin, and that basically removes uh, a doom from Azathoth, which is nice, but you know, it's. I don't know if we'll be able You to can win without it. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so if everything goes according to plan, uh, our ending will be basically uh, the lead investigator will join the Pipers of Azathoth forever. So <laughs> have fun, too, lead too investigator, point. again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and you might, have, you might have said this at the top, Ian, and I apologize if I'm retreading old ground, but before the Black Throne... Out of the ones we've seen so far, at least, this is the scenario that... The the final scenario of a campaign that is affected the most by the lead-up, correct? Like, in TFA, it didn't seem like Shattered Aeons. I guess it kind of was because of the enemy, but that didn't change our strategy too much in Shattered Aeons, like what we did beforehand. And I would say same thing with Carcosa. Whereas this one, it seems like every single thing... Like the main strategy of this campaign is all about how is it going to set up Black Throne. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Carcosa had the the doubt and conviction which we wanted to choose. But oh, sure, I suppose. Those are pretty big buckets to fall into. Yeah. Still seems pretty linear. You just choose which linear path you, you're putting yourself on. I mean, like going yeah, back when and you're forth. when you're choosing it from the end, hindsight twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, but yeah, blind play is a lot different. But yeah, <laughs> I think we can all agree that the huge narrative twist in Clutches of Chaos, though, that we're not going to talk about because we all know <laughs> it, it does really change your perception oh, of the no. rest of the camp. It does, yeah. It just <laughs> Nick's like, I have no idea. What's going on. It's crazy when you find out that TCU was just all a dream in the lead investigator's mind. You're actually a, on, in a cell phone game. In a, yeah, I, I also that don't was know only what's released in, in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also don't know what the the twist is in Clutches of Chaos because you know I'm just playing for the R one. Mm-hmm. So, is there story text or just skip, there... skip right over the italics? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> oh, this is this is italicized. Who cares? <laughs> I feel like and that's why I love that's why I love Carcos so much because it's like, did you really think the cops are going to believe you? And it's in no yeah, it's a bullet. It's like, a hey, you snuck point. in some story text. Then. Hashtag <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I, I love the story of TCU, mm-hmm. actually. So yeah, it's an inter- The I feel like Black Throne is an interesting beast because to what you're saying, Nick, I feel like it does and doesn't have an impact. Like I've done all this work to prioritize tally marks because it's like the one resource we have to counter the swinginess mm. of Black Throne. Like yeah. I think what makes Black Throne as hard is it's swingy. Like do you yeah. guess right on some of these locations or not? And that determines a lot. And tally marks are like really the only counter we have to that mm-hmm. other than our own spectacular play abilities. Um, but which is not reliable. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. Half, yeah. Half of them could be taken by the scenario to begin with. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And, and although they are the counter we have available, I, they're not like, 
one, they're pretty abstract, so it's just like tally marks based on the choices we made. But two, they don't always provide the answers we need, so right. it's like they help us, but they don't always give us the help we need. So it's like the best we can do for that scenario is just get as many tally marks as we can and hope it makes a difference. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Accidentally very deep. Hmm. <laughs> 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 that's what i aim for mm-hmm. and so just to be clear six is the most right that can be yes yeah gotten yeah okay. that's the max i i like this plan mm-hmm. I'm, I'm down i think it looks I, like, great i mean my knee-jerk reaction like when we were first even just starting to mention mm-hmm. uh, TCU Iron Man was like scenario six, jack out, all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. If you're I, actually going to see it through to the end, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well, I mean, the thing is, like, so you finish CR, uh, scenario six, you can just resign first action snare seven, and then you're at scenario eight, <laughs> so you're good, right? There you go. That's how I'm going to play bad TCU has to from... happen. That can't be the way it works. That's how I'm going to play TCU from now on, just so I never actually see Scenario 7. <laughs> <laughs> just turn one resign. Oh, man. Oh, God. And just literally actually play a, a, like a game of Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> it's your side scenario. Well, Roland went to Bangkok, and then he cleared three red cubes, and... <laughs> yeah. So this will be our plan until 11 a.m. on Friday. Uh, 11 p.m. on Friday uh, night. Yeah. <laughs> I was Eleven waiting to try for like someone 2:30 to say a.m. Yeah. <laughs> did we no, make we a mistake the going at 2:30? <laughs> uh, at least we I don't have to look TCU? Ian in the face when he when he <laughs> d- he resigns in defeat and tears open a new page in his campaign <laughs> journal. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> That was pretty powerful. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Casey, do you know what your group's planning to do? Uh, I think we were adhering to something pretty close to this. We, we intended to get through, you know, I, I think we can agree that a six scenario campaign is like not, it's unending, but it's like, it's not a real ending, right? Right. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it is, but it's the wussy ending. Yeah, I, I think I it was kind it. of. <laughs> I think we we kind of said like, okay, kind of a low bar for secret name, like or not, yeah, uh, for secret name, like we get what we get. Hopefully, we beat it. Uh, Wage is a sin. It, not having to deal with the doom later is nice, but not campaign ending. Uh, mm. For the greater the good. Uh, when you think about it, like they're both kind of the same way of dealing with those enemies, like evading mm. them turns off the problem of them having doom on them or parlaying and talking to them (laughs) means that they're not a a big deal uh circle tests throw numbers at it uh i i i I, I think you know we have spent a considerable amount of time like there, there are lots of little variables but they kind of all tie into really only a few choices that that influence like the the majority of the campaign Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> and, and uh, approaching it like every choice is just to get the ability to switch things around in that final scenario. Like if if that's actually the the prioritization, then the priority, you know, the then we would say okay, then we would just side with the lodge the whole time <laughs> because okay. that means that you don't even have to have those locations ever exist because you're not playing scenario eight <laughs> sure. right uh optimal strategy to be black throne do not yeah never play it. I, that, that's that's what being a mystic teaches you is that just canceling stuff is the best problem solving you play <laughs> premonition on the whole campaign cancel yeah. the whole scenario yeah mm, yeah oh the, i pl- the i played premonition and box. it showed me that i have to play before the ba- black throne and so- <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's funny, Casey, because <laughs> I agree with you that after having delved so deep into this campaign details, like, uh-huh. 
there are paths to take, and of course, there's that. There's the one big one that if, that changes everything if you end it early. Mm-hmm. But in general, like we're going in such detail because we are optimizing the life out of it, like we do yeah. in Iron Man. But in general, compared to other campaigns, I don't think the paths make a huge difference overall in mm. your in your chances compared to like TFA and Carcosa, where I I really felt that like okay, what path are we taking on these different mm-hmm. like. Uh, like scenarios, mm. and it, 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 that's an interesting comparison again. Because like for for TFA, yes, you you can pick like your two different sides that you you choose to align yourself with potentially for the the last scenario. But at the same time, there's such a symmetry to them that like yeah. oh, you need to get three tokens into the bag by making you know clicking these boxes mm-hmm. in the the different cutscenes basically. Uh, and those give you basically the same ending for either side, and then it's just a matter of what chaos tokens you're, you're dealing with. Here, it's kind of the same thing, uh, a little bit up front. Like, are you going to make your, you know, one person accept fate, and they're, you know, basically going to be like, you know, the punching bag kind of for a lot of the scenario <laughs> because they've got these extra weaknesses and stuff to deal with. And then, especially at the end, like, yeah. you know, you, you are. Just, uh, you know, resigning that person to an eternity of insane piping or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then rejecting it or just trying to, like, take just... control of it. I, I th- This is my favorite campaign is an aside, like, uh, just from mm. an aesthetic and, and narrative perspective. But mm. from, mm-hmm. like, an actual narrative design, it is much more streamlined, in my opinion. Or at least other than those, like, the the uh, perforated boxes like you would get in a the rules book for like a legacy game where it would be like put sticker here like <laughs> for uh put the sticker here for when return to TCU comes out like yeah i i have to imagine that there there is more go there you know will be more going on uh but um yeah yeah i feel like this campaign wins the award for most mm-hmm like decisions that have huge story implications but <laughs> yeah. not necessarily mechanical yeah. implications <laughs> like yeah and for for an optimized playthrough it's kind of hard to be like yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's like the that only played a part in me avoiding the question mark on the win but other mm-hmm. than that yeah there's a lot of things the the story is really cool in the end yeah. the endings are hugely different but in terms of mechanics it's not always like a huge difference mm-hmm. right this one is certainly my favorite story campaign. Mm. Like, from a story perspective, and I'm not a, as I've mentioned many times, I'm not a huge story guy, mm-hmm. or I'm not a huge lore guy, but, like, this one, the story decisions, like, I thoroughly enjoy making them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And they, they do have, like, there is the mechanical implication of if, if you go full lodge, like, being able to win at scenario six. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's super sweet. So. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I think that accept your fate, reject your fate initial decision is probably the most momentous of the whole campaign, like Casey mentioned, <laughs> which Ooh, I guess yeah. makes sense with the themes of the whole campaign. But I think that's yeah. the point, yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, it matters. It, yeah, it does matter, but it doesn't affect like the mechanical setup too much. It, it, yeah, it, it no, is. that's fair. Except for when you draw Ace of Rods. <laughs> yeah, then you, you just Except know that you're then. a total schmuck. <laughs> or, or, or the elder thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you fail. And then you, yeah. I, I'm looking at these elder things, I mean, these numbers seem pretty much in line with the normal chaos bag. You know, I, yeah. I don't know if they're... It, at least not having to deal with the cultists uh, seems to be the way to go. But, like, having an extra yeah. minus three, mm-hmm. I feel like you're usually playing to get up by three anyways. On stuff that you want to guarantee to fire. Yeah. Um, There's just a few times where it's, like, it's instead of a... It's a minus two versus minus three. Mm-hmm. And I think well, and that's in nicer. Well, in Black Throne, mm-hmm. it becoming a negative oh, yeah, minus six, six with a, with a uh, Ancient Evil's Rider on it. Like, oh boy. No thanks. Yeah, I mean the tablet's still bad too. Mm-hmm. It's minus three if you fail as thought the tax. Yeah, right. It's like three so, and three or something. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's like <laughs> the the elder thing. If you fail, it screws over the whole group. The tablet, if you fail, it screws over you. Right. Yeah. But so when we did our campaign with uh, you know 
the, the Tony Rita group, I believe we <laughs> lost because you were the killer and drew a bunch of tablets and got knocked <laughs> out like in two rounds. Yeah. yeah so, uh, I just remember that campaign just like th- this scenario before the Black Throne just going absolute tits up. Like, oh, was, yeah. <laughs> we were As doing so well. And then it was just like, like, was I lead? And like all Maybe. my weapons were open spaces or something like that? Something like, like that, yeah. I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn to save my life. So mm-hmm. better be better, Ian. Oh, I think the turn yep. after you died, I as Rita got knocked out, and I had been chain dodging a bunch of dancers, and then the rest of the group <laughs> immediately advanced right afterwards. So they just came back out right on top of them. No. Oh. <laughs> Uh, um, the nice yeah. thing is if you go this route and mm-hmm. keep the cultists out of the bag, you're really like localizing it to those tablets or elder things. So I yeah. totally wouldn't mind someone bringing some seal into mm. before the Black Throne to to seal those tokens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is not a meta discussion that we have had at all in the prior <laughs> two and a half yeah. hours <laughs> talking about it the strategy not, no. for the campaign. Yeah. So speaking of a Friday night discussion, yeah, <laughs> who's bringing seal? Yeah, yeah. I bring seal? Scott, Let's I think have you should now. take uh, versatile so that you can get an intrepid into your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let that I be my participation. Going, mm-hmm. I was considering going thirty card Mandy and planning for double versatile to get like hallowed <laughs> mirror and something. Aww. but yeah, hmm. maybe, maybe, maybe. Still, I don't know. <laughs> Because it's like four experience, and I'm forty card Mandy again. Yeah, I was about to say, let's see <laughs> yeah. how the first few scenarios go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think we've wrung out this campaign and squeezed every last bit of juice out of it, except for that one running mm-hmm. down my fourth knuckle. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was disturbingly sp- specific. What? <laughs> yeah. what? Why have you guys never wrung water out of a rag? What? Yes. I have, but... <laughs> what, is, what is going on? I did a pay special... T- 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 <laughs> Why? What is this? Is this okay. a bit? Oh, no. No! We There's need to no talk bit. about something else. I think we're actually... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no more fourth knuckle discussion. There's, there's, there's no bit going on at all, aside from just my own life experience. Sean's doing dishes right now. Any final <laughs> thoughts on, on TCU as a campaign? Uh, I think the only thing we need to do is just double check on the Doom draws ever closer. <laughs> not adding a minus four, like if we're not really caring about the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This could be Bye, a quick. Ned. This could be a quick campaign if you do the quick resign in wages and then a, and then a quick resign in clutches as well. Like you're scratching two scenarios off the board. And if so, if yeah, you bring it, enough dynamite for secret name, then you don't have to play the rest of it. So that's like yeah. you know another couple hours. Oh. Seems fair. I mean, you could just engage Brown Jenkin and then just, you know, walk around the map. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> just discard my hand every action. Oh, I'm saying, like, take attacks of opportunity. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. That out. yeah. 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 I'm sure that's the thing that will happen to me. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Uh, well, I think we did a, a good enough job of. of informing everyone of where you go for Iron Man interest at the beginning of the episode, so I won't besmirch that by (laughs) repeating it here. Let's move into tentacle time. Guys, what's been grabbing your extra time? Casey, special guest, dear friend. Let's start with you. Uh, I don't know if anyone's talked about Lovecraft Country, and honestly, I've kind of fallen off and don't really like it that much. Uh, if, if, if uh, anyways, uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, but I, huh? since January, one of the two movies I saw in theaters this year, uh, Underwater. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have watched this movie so many times this year because I am such a sucker for deep sea exploration. Uh, uh. and it's about that. And any anything that's like, it, I have described it as the best Dead Space movie that is ever going to be made <laughs> since that company doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. And it is basically like if Dead Space is at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, uh, and that's the one with <laughs> Kirsten Stewart, right? It is, yeah. uh, and okay. she's great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> she, 
she has her detractors, but you know she's solid. Uh, yeah, I would love to see her outside of the Twilight series as a context. Well, okay, whoa, 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 whoa! You've seen the Twilight series, dude. I live, <laughs> I live with a oh, wife yeah. and daughter. I've seen the Twilight series. I've read the Twilight series. Well, that seems to be a more voluntary That's, thing. I can understand yeah. the watching yeah. one of the movies, but they forced many... me to read it <laughs> to to no, appreciate no, the movie. I, I'm. <laughs> I'm, okay, Team Jacob or team... Sean's like I'm a oh. good dad, and then we're all just really making fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was I was a good husband first, but Team yeah. Jacob <laughs> all the way. Edward is manipulative and ridiculous. <laughs> team Jacob, you know, I'm Team Guy who almost hit Bella with a truck. <laughs> That's the one dude who gets like five seconds in the movie and then is out. He's just out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's my pick. Yeah, uh, go read Twilight, what? everyone. Um, yes, that's <laughs> where we landed on that. <laughs> Scott, Casey, is it a the underwater thing? Is it a horror? Or it what's it a, is what's a horror the... movie. So yeah, there's basically an earthquake. There's oh, a, a deep sea drill, uh, like at the bottom of the ocean, and uh, there's an earthquake, and then it's like an escape movie, uh, and there may be something else that they have to contend with, and I'll just leave it at that. I did watch that one uh, a couple months ago. Yeah, I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is the quintessential good, bad movie, right? Where it's like a, a <laughs> yeah. stupid Ooh. plot or whatever, but it's just yeah. extremely <laughs> slickly made. And it, I, again, I'm just a total sucker for for those sorts of premises or settings. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Well, and it's got like, T.J. Miller in it, too, and he's always entertaining. At the least. Mm-hmm. Scott, how about you? What's been grabbing you? Um, I have been playing a certain Star Wars game. Uh, oh. Star Wars Squadrons. Star Wars War Crime Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. War, War Crime Simulator 2020. Yeah, if you play the campaign as the Empire. Whew, that's a, hey, go kill those civilians. <laughs> hey, go blow up those medical frigates. It's like, am I? Are we the Are baddies? We the baddies? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but the multiplayer is really fun, yeah. and the especially the five on five. What the, what's it called? Fleet battles. Well, it's yeah. all five on five, but the fleet battle is the the MOBA tower yeah, defense. Yeah, where player. you have to like. I have not tried that. Yeah, you have to pu- you push back and forth, mm-hmm. and um, like at first you have to dogfight, and when you have like you I don't know you go plus five or whatever the score thing is, you you're you get more quote unquote morale. And then you have to attack their um, their frigates. Mm-hmm. And then once you take down their frigates, then you can go off to their capital ship. But at any point during that time, if they uh, if they kill enough of you guys that they bring their morale up, then it switches back to dogfight, and then they can attack your frigates, and you have to defend it. And there's all these different builds and stuff like that. And, Gorfax, I see you say in the chat, if you're on PC, we got to squad up. Just kidding, there's cross-play mm-hmm. with... Xbox, PC, and PlayStation, which is amazing. What an age we live in. I was playing on <laughs> PS4 with a friend who was on PC and a friend who was on Xbox. Simultaneously! Mm-hmm. Yep. It's like we're living and in the future! Seamless. Yeah. <laughs> what a time Well, I alive. wouldn't go that far, Casey. <laughs> yeah, maybe not <laughs> quite yet, but... Um, but yeah, it's a super fun game, uh... I I really wish I had like a super gaming rig and VR and like full on like throttle and stick because I think that'd be like just the best way to play. Um, Dude, even but I'm I- I'm a hop on here because my mm-hmm. only tentacle time is squadrons as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Even with Get in my cockpit, <laughs> you're right. Even with just a controller, I don't think I've been oh, more something. satisfied with a control scheme for a flight simulator out of a controller than I than I have been with this game in eons. Like I I guess my my background might be a little bit different. My grandpa was like a, a marine pilot and he was also the first computer nerd I ever knew, so I like played like Aces of the Pacific and the Red Baron out of DOS. In, oh, wow. Like I've been playing flight simulators my entire life, and Squadrons is the first like dual stick controller, modern controller that really gets it right. And uh <laughs> I was really afraid at the thirty nine ninety nine MSRP 
that this was going to be a hollow game that was really just a soulless tech demo for the microtransaction laden masterpiece that would follow it. But Squatchrons is really good at $40. Yeah. Like I I have no regrets at all. And <laughs> I'm playing I'm playing in uh, PS4 VR and you know PSVR is what it is. It's not terribly high resolution or, or high fidelity in any way. But being able to just sit in the cockpit and actually look up and around when you're in a New Republic ship, not in a Tie Fighter, um, mm-hmm. it's it's just a crazy experience and it's awesome. I have been I was I was very very like cautiously optimistic about the game, and. Having actually gotten to play with it, I am very, very, very pleased with it. Worth forty or thirty nine ninety nine, easily. Absolutely. Only other thing I'm going to mention is the boys. The boys. On Amazon Prime. Oh boy, that is a show that has some real adult content. So, <laughs> um, it is very good. It does not stray away from unsavory topics no but it's basically superheroes if they were a corporation yes. and made to make money and the seedy underbelly of look you know if you just had like hundreds of superheroes in the world and how would they use their powers behind doors uh-huh. behind closed doors uh-huh as as a so. person who grew up on x-men but also grew up with how corporatization ruins literally everything <laughs> this this series is like you mean super like all in, of us. Well, well, I mean, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to assume anyone else's experience, but I assume a fair few people identify. The show is great. The show is great. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that is that is all me for excellent technical time. Nick, and how about you? Really- oh yeah. Um. So. I also uh, picked up Squadrons. I have not put as much time into it as everyone else, because I got it a week after everyone else, but uh, I played the prologue and promptly decided I was done with the story. Um, and have <laughs> The been story teaches nothing. you good multiplayer abilities, though, to its defense. I think multiplayer also teaches you good multiplayer abilities. Fair. Um, so that's what I've been doing. Much like... It's it's very similar to how I played Destiny 2 when that came out. Like, I played the campaign <laughs> until I was bored with it, which was well before the end. Um, and then I hopped into multiplayer, and that was all I did. PvP, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been doing dogfights in multiplayer here and there, and trying my best to master the TIE Interceptor, uh, which we all know is the best ship in Star Wars, hands down. Um, in the Imperial so. Fleet, for sure. Uh, Turns out the best dogfighter ship is the TIE Bomber. Sorry to <laughs> burst no. your bubbles. Well, and here's the thing. like I've tried even like changing my loadouts on my ships and all that, but I still find I go back to the... Cla- like I always leave my second loadout as the classic vanilla version because there are times where I'm like, okay, I put way too much into maneuverability and my interceptor has like no top speed now, but it's super maneuverable and it's all like, you know, hit and, or, like, yeah, hit and run and close range stuff. I kind of want to go back to the to the to the basic one um but anyway squadrons is really fun uh but the thing that i really want to prop for tentacle time is uh much like the last couple episodes my D D stream every tuesday night at 7 p.m central uh we're streaming rhyme of the frost maiden the brand new campaign from wizards of the coast casey and ian are both players in that six player campaign it is super fun it's some of the some of the best fifth edition that I've I've ran um, and that I've experienced uh, has happened in this campaign, and there's so much left to do. We're we've, we're on session what eight coming up this week, and we're we were probably only I'd say fifteen, maybe yeah, fifteen percent through the book. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's great, um, super exciting stuff. Uh, so yeah, go to, uh, I would highly encourage anybody in the sound of my voice to go to twitch.tv slash Nicholas Corey, uh, to check out that stream. Like I said, every Tuesday we stream it and then you can catch the VODs and all that, uh, afterwards. So nice. Ian, bring us home. Oh, well, I haven't had a ton of extra time cause I too am in the process of, uh, home buying and home searching which takes up a huge amount of time but uh i did pick up squadrons um so i I share that with all of you and i could not resist 
um, since I do have the a VR, I could not resist, you know, being able to jump into a bit oh, of an X Wing and it's experience so cool. that. Yeah, it's. it's I've o- only played a little bit, just the two prologue scenarios, but just that experience in VR was. Uh, it's such a rush when you're just like full throttle towards the Star Destroyer in VR. It's. Yeah, it's 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 what I, exactly what I wanted it to be. So I'm looking forward to playing that more when I get more free time. Um, and other than that, Casey mentioned Lovecraft Country, so I have been watching that um, pretty much every week and enjoying it a lot. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they wrap up the season. Uh, I'm not sure if they're planning on doing another season because it seems like they're going to cover everything that was in the book for the most part. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I have only finished episode one, and it left me, it left me wanting more. So I'm interested to see where it goes. Wanting more, like you want to watch the rest of it, or wanting more, like you want more from the show. I want to see where it goes. Okay. So, so I suppose the the former. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it was ambiguous. I found it ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Well. I think that's everything. Guys, Iron Man is on the very horizon. Oof. Mm-hmm. It's it's exciting and terrifying at the same time. We're going to see you on the Friday night to play through the prologue. Come join us, even if you're not going to use our prologue results. Um, and then as well, obviously, if you want to jo- uh, join us for the drawing of the weaknesses, please make sure your team's name is, is in that Google form that is going to be in our show notes. And... Uh, uh, I feel like we're just going to have a big fun wrap up from Arkham Knights and, and everything that stems from it the next time we record. So uh, thank mm-hmm. you for joining us for episode 92 of Mythos Busters and we'll see you guys on the other side of Iron Man. Bye. 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 Bye.